55 got a thousand APM right now. Oof. Blazing. That's OP. He's holding down his buttons, I think. <laughs> it's gonna fall really quickly. I imagine so. I mean, how could you ever... How could you, you ever you sustain can, that? I can I can stay at 700 spamming, like 1A, 2A, 3A and clicking on things, but yeah, you can't maintain it for long. And why would you want to? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. We're already we're at 550 APM or 450 APM for Artie Mctosis. How the heck? How the heck are we gonna stay at that APM? That's crazy. Yeah, well, he's yes. warming up his fingers right now. Warming this guy's 40 years fingers. old with 450 APM. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's the he's he's got those joints moving, saying, right? He's got those joints moving, <laughs> making sure the fingers have a full range of motion to deal with the shenanigans that G5's been doing in this game. All right, game number one here, guys. Radeon, of course. Should be a fun little match here. G5, part of Nom Clan. Both, uh,. Shun and I are uh, in that clan as well, so definitely be fun to. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard for us. It's hard for us right now to decide who who we're each cheering for, right? We've got our fellow I mean, caster Artosis, and we've got our fellow Nomer in G5. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just gonna say I want RT to win just so that we can cast RT in the finals. How about that? <laughs> that would be. The best of both worlds, yes. That would be the, the optimal outcome. As the optimal play. Well, just a normal opener here for both players. Kind of an interesting cybernetics core position here, but going to be part of the wall later on that he's going to produce to, to prevent himself from losing lots of probes to drops that could be coming in here. Mm-hmm. Factories, yeah, normal. Normal. yeah Factory. everything, everything pretty yeah. normal. Leaving the one, leaving the one SCV on gas is indicative of wanting to go for an earlier machine shop, though. Maybe just making the single vulture from this factory. That's pretty standard right now. Mm -hmm. Single vulture, get it out on the map, get some control. I'm sure, you know what's happening out there, <clears throat> and grab your natural without too much pressure coming your way because the dragons will have to stay at home. Yeah, G5 is not going to go for a rangeless expand or anything like that. At least, I, I guess he could cancel this range now and go for a rangeless 23 Nexus, but he may do that actually when he kills this SCV. He could cancel the range if he wanted to make the Nexus right now, but I don't think he'll go for that. Oh, right into a machine shop here. No Vulture before wow, machine okay. shop. It's a little bit of a different style here from Artosis, and he's got four Marines out in the front. He's going to pu push forward here. Uh, the Dragoon is just on a move command. It might take a bit of damage. We'll see. But he's going to yeah, throw down I'll... his CC here and get a Vulture in just a moment with a bunker following up behind this. I mean, guys in the chat, you might be uh, used to seeing Artos rage on rage on the ladder a little bit, but the reality is Artos is a very competent tournament player and he's not going to be getting frustrated so easily in these games. And he's going to have very good strategies prepared and understanding of the game state to try and squeeze out as much as he can in the early game. We had a, a very delayed bunker here. These four Marines coming out and bullying back that Dragoon, trying to squeeze out as much early game minerals as he can. So he wants to build that bunker as the latest time possible. He knows that the range is about to finish up now just as the bunker's finishing. So right now, the goons could be hitting the bunker right as the range is finishing. So it's a very good understanding of the game state by RT here. And Artos is going to go right into a tank. Make sure that he actually doesn't take any damage on this bunker, but he's not going to have pressure out on the map. Not that G5 knows that for sure. He hasn't seen this tank yet, so he has to keep some dragoons back at home just to make sure that there's not a vulture running in somewhere. He's going to keep two Dragoons back here, so being ultimate, uh, like, really, really defensive. That's going to allow this Vulture to maybe slip out on the map, although it's probably not going to get by here without the Dragoon seeing that, but should be able to get by without taking too much damage on it. Yeah, I think the one thing that 
uh, that the RT has to bite the bullet on is he's taking a very early academy, so it's going to eat into his economy just a little bit. Because when you make those comm sets, it does make mean you don't you miss out on making two SEVs from both of the CC. So essentially, you miss out on four SEVs worth of production. So ideally, you don't have to place those comm sets until the latest possible moment. But he does need to scan G5 and see what the tech of choice is going to be. And it's going to be Reavers of one gateway. Reaver off of one gateway is a little bit greedy, but. The way that Artos is playing this out very defensively, it's going to be fine here. He's going to slip two vultures out on the map. This is a nice little play here. Pretending to go down on this side. Maybe forcing the dragon to go around this way. And then he's going to come out on the right hand side. Just kind of a bit of a mind game there with Artos's movement of his vultures. Yeah. Maybe now he can get around this way. Come down through here and try to get in. He will definitely come over here to put the mine at the third base just to see when that third is going to be taken, but as an opportunity to maybe slip by right through this little dark area. We do have the good note in them natural, so that would actually be a mistake. And now more gateways are being added on. We're going to have that reaver popping here soon. I believe we just heard a scan go down. I'm not sure if he got the scan on the main on the reaver or not, but with the engineering bay finishing up and turrets going to be starting here, I think he's going to be prepared for this. Yeah, he's switching into three gates with an observer tech, which is basically what you'd open with to be super safe. The only difference is that he rushed into getting the Reaver first, so now he's going to be able to put on some pressure with the Reaver harass and slow down any potential push timings of RT, and he might even set himself up for a potential Bulldog. G5 is the kind of guy that goes for these like big Bulldog plays where he just wants to bust you open with shuttles, Reavers, and Zealots, so... He might go for that here and first he'll put on some pressure. Oh, he's been careful. Takes a big hit. Nice. I'm not sure if that was, I don't think that was intentional by RT, but that might have been intentional to leave the vulture there so that he would unload the reaver. If that was intentional, that's crazy. I don't think it necessarily was, but if it was, that's really hilarious. You just, hey, a big shot on that reaver. It's now into yellow HP after being chunked by that 125 damage of the mine. Look at that 55 HP on that reaver. It's now so soft. He's going to leave it out here just to like recharge its shields a little bit, lick its wounds, and eventually come for some damage but now rt is super safe against any kind of harass potential yeah we missed out on a turret back here which could have been a little bit problematic but since we're not being too aggressive with this reaver for, from g5 he is going to be able to get the turret up here in time he's noticed that there is that hole in his defense and he's adding mines inside the main being nice and defensive he's going to try and slip by with these vultures maybe get into that natural great block here by g5 preventing that from happening and he will be able to get this Nexus online and with no vultures out on the map, there's no longer that threat of catching the uh, transferring probes here for G5. You should be able to get a nice smooth transfer and get that third base online. Yeah, everything's looking uh, pretty smooth for G5 here in terms of his own curve, but the reality is uh, he's also navigating this quite well. He's getting his own third base on the way. He's getting his grades. We see a very fast weapons upgrade from G5. It's going to be carriers, I think, Sam carrier transition here interesting we're gonna have to pay really close attention to where artosis is scanning coming up to see when he finds out about this carrier transition the reaver play into carrier is really popular it it works out very well the mineral and gas optimization is uh very smooth with this type of transition so it it is expected it is something that can definitely happen. All right, we're keeping track of this. He sees it. Look at that. Beautiful scan oh, here. Nice. These Stargates are not even done. And Artie goes ahead and scans. He finds that confirmation. He has the third uh, base almost done here. But, I mean, he can kind of float this out, start mining here, and just keep the factory production rolling. He does not need to transition into, you know, Starport here. I think that Starport would have been coming down really, really soon if he was going into a long game. If this was a normal game, he should have that Starport coming up right now. But in this game state, he's just going to wait for plus one. All these factors to come online and this base to get operational. And then he's going to go for a huge attack here to try and knock out G5 before these carriers start up. Usually you've got like a three minute window of when those carriers are going to come online once you scan the fleet beacon. But he saw that before the fleet beacon even started. So he's almost got four minutes worth of preparation time until he needs to actually pull the trigger. Around about three minutes he'll pull the trigger and there'll be like one minute of execution of pushing across the map and really starting to get on top of G5 right as those carriers start to become a threat. Because there's only two Stargates, you have two initially and then it goes up to four. Once you've got four carriers, you can start to fight the Terran. And that's when it, and six is when it starts to become a little bit scary. But until that time, Artie's got 
got a big window of opportunity here to build up a massive army and push out onto the map in the next few minutes. It's going to push forward tentatively here, just setting up a position to siege up the tanks here. Or seeing it back, this Reaver. Reaver not able to get a shot on any of these tanks. And the tank actually gets a shot on the Reaver, bringing it down into very low HP. The Reaver is super important as a part of this strategy to make sure that the Terran can't easily cross the map here and put the pressure on you. You have to slow him down uh, as he's coming out. There's the third base. He's going to transfer a bunch of workers here. He's got the factories. He maybe add on a couple more factories here. He does start the starport so he can get into his later upgrades. But he's going to hit a big timing here very, very soon. He's crossing the map with his vultures, trying to find some locations where he can harass. But everything's been kind of locked up here by G5. He's got really good defensive position. And he's not really in interested in taking a bunch of bases right now. More interested in just getting these carriers online while being safe. Yeah, more critically, he's able to secure these bases without being forced to make any cannons at all. So every resource that he's got is being dumped into either gateways, zealots, carriers, or something that's actually going to be used in a, a way of dismantling RT rather than having to be more defensive and def uh, worrying about protecting his economy. So he's right now really, really min-maxed to the absolute extreme right now. He's going to have a big infantry to support these carriers and a big potent threat of carriers to overwhelm RT the longer this game goes on. It is cross-map as well, so it's going to be really tough for RT to push across this map and actually deal with this threat. He's going to start the science of facility now. It should be starting a second armory as well. There it is. So two armory. He is going to go into his plus two. But is he still going to be able to hit this big timing? I thought he would skip the upgrade and just try to hit a massive timing attack right before carrier. It seems like he's still going to do that with the plus two in the back pocket just in case it doesn't quite work out and he needs to do something drastic like split the map or grab a fourth base you know get into like super late game against these carriers well it seems like he's like giving up his window of attack and he now is the time to go if he wants to go he has to go now like now's the time you unseage and go so the latest possible timing to attack as terran in this situation he's choosing not to for the time being seems like he's more content to max out given that he hasn't tried to push across the map within the last 30 to 60 seconds so i imagine he's just going to max out get two to three control groups worth of goliaths and then just try and overwhelm the carriers and the the, the ground force that way We've gone up to three Stargates here. We're going to get to five Carrier very soon, and that's where things start to get a little bit out of control for the Terran player. Another base is going to go up here in the top right. I think G5 feeling like, well, if you're not going to attack me, I might as well take a bunch of bases around the map. I might as well just sit back, get those cannons up, you know, get into this extra uh, Stargate and just spread out all over the map so that even if you do launch a big attack here, and I think that attack is coming now, there's going to be bases all over the map for G5 to just suck up minerals and really... Um, oh, nice picking off that reaver. Just suck up minerals and keep making interceptors here and carriers while this attack is going on. Yeah, right now, the only issue arty has got to contend with is not getting this army caught with its pants down. So he's going to be trying to scan ahead, trying to figure out exactly where the carriers are, where the infantry is. Right now, it's on the northern threshold, going to cut off reinforcements and go for a counterattack and force Arty into retreat, and then try and pounce on top of these unseaged tanks, try and slow down the Terran advance as much as possible, and keep the army kind of pinned down in the center, buying more time for these carriers to come the swell in their number right now another three carriers on the way and eventually he's gonna have such a hard high amount of these carriers that you can start flying around the map picking off some of these command centers that he's trying to set up and just starting to fight the terran head on once he gets a superior account of carriers here. yeah once you snipe the observer you can just back away because there are mines over here on the left hand side just leave mines and let the dragoons die to the mines they can't do any sort of counter attack here he's gonna chase this army all the way up into the top right hand corner and he might be able to come over here and take out the space, but look at the carrier count now. We've got five carriers here. I don't know how far along we are. We've got, okay, a bunch of interceptors on quite a few of these, and we've got the plus one done. Plus two is just about to finish. Plus one armor is coming up as well. Here comes that fight. Here comes that big army making its way over here to the third base. Just going to back away right now for G5. He's got plenty of space to work with here. This impassable terrain is going to be his best friend right now as he's trying to take on this army. Another carrier popping out. We're up to six carriers now, which gets a little bit unwieldy here. And the Goliaths aren't shooting very well. Not really picking off too many interceptors. He needs to, in this uh, type of situation, kill every single interceptor. Kill all the interceptors and then push forward. It's like, you're not going to be able to jump on top of these carriers. They've got too much space to run away to. He's just going to be trading out army here 
at kind of a deficit. He's trying to move some tanks up here. Getting tanks up here to clear this out would be really, really good for Artosis right now. There's only a few Zealots out on the map, and he should be able to kill that base while taking on this fight right here. Back at home, Artos is trying to make more bases right now. He's trying to continue to grow, and he's actually managed to sl uh, slow down the Interceptor count. He's killed off a lot of the Interceptors. He's getting over here towards the natural. He's continuing this push, but the s momentum is starting to run out here. There's starting to be less and less units, less and less Goliaths. We need another big macro round out of Artosis to reach this army. Otherwise, everything is gonna blow up and die. Yeah, he's done a good job of shading off a lot of these interceptor count. He's taken the fangs out of the carriers for the most part, but there's not enough units left over to start sniping these carriers off. And G5 just barely hanging on with the bare minimum amount of interceptors. Does lose one of those carriers there, but he's still got seven. There's another one on red HP that could be sniped, but RT's done a good job of macroing back at home. Maybe there's enough forces remaining that he can come back out onto the map and start fighting these bases. Right now, G5 sitting on four base worth of production, 160 supply to 160 of RT. So right now, it seems like Terran's still doing well, but he has to get out on the map he has to mobilize these goliaths and get under these carriers and actually do something but if g5 keeps using these dead spaces and avoiding the main threat of the terran army head on then he can still like just micro rt down for forever and eventually will starve him out of this game maybe if artosis had sent the tanks up here those tanks that were kind of sitting here siege to to start killing this base we could have really limited g5 but he's got this space online he's got this space online he still has money here he's got so much uh, just income here, raw income to keep pumping up these carriers and to keep building interceptors. It's going to be very hard. Artosis is going to have to force a really difficult fight for G5 somehow. Get him out into the open and start to hunt down some of these carriers if he wants any chance of winning this game. He also needs to defend this expansion over here, which is about to be under attack by these dragoons and zealots that are coming out. Uh, up into this 12 o'clock. Looks like he should be able to handle that. He's jumping on top of some of these carriers now. He's going to jump on the carrier here over at the third base. Looks like he can get one of them, maybe. This one carrier very, very low on that HP. The Goliaths are having a really hard time, uh, you know, connecting with their shots here because he's actually microing back at home right now, trying to get things together. The Goliaths really aren't firing much, and G5 is taking a really nice trade against these Goliaths. Yeah, this is a bad news bear situation for the Terran player. He's just getting shaved off way too much. And Goliaths are the most dumbest units for targeting. If they lock onto a target and it goes out of range, they won't reacquisition a new target. They'll be trying to hit the thing that's out of range the entire time. So they're really dumb. You have to really babysit them to get maximum value out of them. And RT here, not able to find enough of these carrier kills to whittle them down to be more manageable. And eventually, he's going to find himself in a bit of a deficit where he can't keep up with the carriers anymore. And they're going to start coming across the map and taking out this base at the 12 o'clock and reset on threat his infrastructure. Oh, he's going to try and take out 6 o'clock here, and he might be able to get it, but I think the carrier force is going to come down clearing out all of these tanks. So he's just going to sacrifice the tanks that he's got here on the field to hopefully just go ahead and kill this. He's actually baited these these uh, carriers into a bit of a weird position where they're actually going to lose one. One carrier is going to go down. A reinforcement wave of Goliaths making its way up here just in time. He's got to target down these uh, probes over here, get the vultures up, to actually deal with that tra target down the nexus here with the tanks as well meanwhile a big attack coming through with these ground forces of g5 gonna hit 12 o'clock a lot of turrets being built up there that's not gonna help out too much against this ground force and man the carrier army is just getting so stacked we've got huge huge carrier forces wow. here that is kind of insurmountable at this point for already to take on he's got 130 supply the goliaths are fighting dragoons right now with the scvs and this carrier force can go anywhere and i don't know if artosis can stop it from you know taking out any of these bases right now you can just start to target down the uh, ccs at this point with plus two and plus three about to finish it's so hard to keep your cc alive at this point yeah, there's a six supply, 60 supply worth of carriers right now. The only real counter to this would be like a little cloaked rave switch. You scan and kill the observers and you gun down all the carriers on move command as they try and flee from the scene. But there's not really any chance of that happening. Adi can't really build those raves quick enough even if he did start throwing down starports. If he did do that earlier on and start throwing down those starports in advance, that was a win condition for him as well. But he elected to go for this much more macro style, just pumping pure Goliath. But he didn't have the kind of unit control that he needed to get on top of these carriers here. Yeah, the the dead spaces here on this map being brutally abused by G5. G5, he can just focus down. Wow, he lost a carrier to a turret there. Kind of funny. 
But he will target down the command center now. Command center goes down in a matter of seconds. We don't have any more command centers on the map. It's just this base alone that was keeping Artosis in the game. He has hardly any mining over here. He's going to send SCVs down here to try and take some bases. And that's something that Terran players can do in these type of situations. They can get a little like Protossy, where they just start taking bases all over the map and, you know, spreading out very, very thin because there's not that big a force on the ground. Uh, if you have mines everywhere and defensive tanks on high ground, it's very hard to just send small contingents of Protoss units to deal with that. And sending the entire carrier army will send you out of position. It'll get into a very bad spot. And the, uh, you know, the tank, the, the, the mech army can start to abuse you in that case. So it is hard, these slow units to deal with these outlying expansions, but G5 here, he's got full map control now. He can send the carriers down here without worrying. He's just going to be able to clear out all these SUVs, and I think this might be all she wrote. Artie, Mictosis, going to go down here. All these SCVs being lost. He still, still has, what, 39 SCVs back at home. He's trying to build into the command center. He's killed this base. We've got some mining here. We've got some mining here. But the real problem is this insane carrier count and two more on the way. You can't deal with 11 carriers unless you've got like a maxed out army and we're not even halfway there. Yeah, if, if somehow um, RT was able to like siphon off a few tanks over to this base in the top right while the carriers went to the bottom left, he could have killed, knocked out this base Ooh. and then he had a win condition of starting to kill all the interceptors. But if he's not taking out these bases or some tactical siege tank plays, there's no way he can set himself up for a win condition where he can just start to whittle down the interceptor count. Now he has to kill the carriers and that's you need like two cold control groups of Goliaths to have a chance and that's still not going to be enough because there's a small infantry force to also support these carriers as well. So the Goliath will not be targeting very cost efficiently now we can see Artie running in with this small support ground force trying to sorry and getting overwhelmed by these carriers as well is Artie Mctosis not able to really deal with the threat of the Protoss player now he's getting too cost efficient of trades doesn't even matter if he loses all these Dragoons for free as long as they soak up some of the target firing off those Goliaths to make it insurmountable an obstacle for them to overcome as these big big fleet of um, carriers here just overwhelm any hopes that Artie's got of coming out to the left and challenging these bases so he can just make interceptors forever now and eventually whittle down the Terran to a numb. Well, he's managed to bait G5 into fighting in the middle of the map instead of over some of these dead spaces. I think G5's realized that that would support decision. He's going to rotate here up to this space, and this has so much space around it. All this dead space here is microable terrain for the carriers to just look at this CC, try to find a way to kill that off while the Goliaths only have this tiny ramp to try and make their way up there to defend that. He's just going to have to fight the Interceptors here. He's going to have to try and keep his CC alive. He's got almost no money left and a very small supply to do it with. The tanks here in the middle of the map are going to get killed, I think, while the Goliaths are over here dealing with uh, that attack, that carrier attack. Okay, he manages to bring the Goliaths back just barely in time. But there's the carriers doing some more damage, picking off more Goliaths for free here. The entirety of the force is going to be brought forward now. G5 has a big ground army now finally to deal with these Goliaths. He's just going to target down the tanks here as they retreat. Goliaths are second fiddle here. They're going to be dealt with no problem by this ground force. So he's just focusing on picking off whatever tanks he can. And there another tank going down here. The Goliaths trying desperately to fight to hold on. But... Such a bank here for G5. He can remake interceptors all day. Yeah, like I said earlier, if, if, if it wasn't for RT, not, if he could just take out this base in the top right with a tank play while the carriers were distracted, this wouldn't be a problem. There would not be enough economy to both support this ground force of Dragoons and Zealots and reproduce interceptors. You'd have to choose one or the other, which means you wouldn't have as much of a support on the ground army, which means you can make more Goliaths, which means you can eventually overwhelm these carriers and have a win condition of just targeting the interceptors. But now he's going to come in and threaten the economy a little bit of G5, but I don't think it's going to find much damage that he needs to really get any kind of hope of clawing his way back into this game it's just barely trickling in some economy from these last remaining bases the base on the left hand side now more or less mined out for rt so just this one base at 12 o'clock going for him and it's very exposed he can't both defend this base and attack at the same time so he's kind of caught between the rock and a hard place yeah rock and a hard place for sure Ooh, one big mine hit wow that killed like four dragoons there <laughs> yeah. that is a big. wildly successful mine hit he's gonna try and retake this base over here already 
I mean, he's still got a fighting force. He's still got a fighting chance, but the carrier force is insane. There's so many carriers here. It's going to be such a slug. Mictosis has to be in the perfect location at the perfect time to deal with this, and he's not. He's out of position right now. His army is heading over here to the center right. He's going to maybe kill this base, but what, what makes you think that he's going to win? in a yeah. base trade situation. There's no reason to think that. Yeah, especially not with this other base still operational for the time being. So he can bank up enough minerals to keep making interceptors for quite some time. There's not that many tanks out on the map as well. So this Zealot Dragoon on the ground is going to trade exceptionally well against the Goliath reinforcements that are waiting up at this uh, infrastructure point of RT Mctosis here. So yeah, it's not looking good for the Terran player. I'm kind of feeling a little bit a little bit shaky for him because if he's not able to deal with this kind of um, carrier threat while he's scouting it four minutes in advance, I'm, I'm feeling rough for him in his chances in this matchup. You know, the worst thing in the feel, uh, the worst feeling in the world here is the Terran when you're coming back to defend and the carriers are using your own high ground against you, sitting on top of your main base, killing your factories, and you can't even get up your own ramp to deal with it. That's what we're about to see here. He's managed to kill all of the mining bases of G5, but he just doesn't have a answer for this army and he can't reproduce anything. He's going to lose all of his factories. This is a dead Terran player, what we're looking at right now. See exactly what I was talking about. Utilizing his own high ground against him. Just killing off uh, Goliath after Goliath after Goliath. A nice mine connection there onto the dragoon but now the dragoon gonna come over here and block all of these from getting up this ramp this is so frustrating for artosis i hope he's gonna be able to shake this one off because this is a l right now for him g5 has made it work yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm sure RT can shake that off. Like, you might see him get frustrated on the ladder. I'm sure he, like, you know, gets a little bit ragey from time to time. But some of the times, he's just a little bit, uh, you know, putting on the show, maybe. But this time, he's going to be focused on the next game. He's a very good tournament player. His head's going to be in it. I'm sure he's going to still see a pretty good performance out of him in game number two. The caster. Artosis. Starcraft Daddy here in the top right hand corner. Bottom right is going to be G5, fellow Nomer. Shout out to the Nom boys in the chat. Love Snow, myself, and Shun all in that group. All in that clan. And G5 here repping the clan tag on his account. Much appreciated. Good to have him in that. And I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm cheering for Artie. How about you, Shun? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of cheering for Artie as well. I'm not gonna lie. But we have got the representation of the Nightmares of Manx here, G5, an old school OG player. He's been around for quite some time. I'm sure most of you have heard that name. Maybe even back in the day, you saw some foreigner replay on like the, the replay replay depot sites, and it was like, oh, G5 against Lancer X. What's all that about? And you download that replay, and you look at it, and you try and like play like these guys, and Try and aspire to be also good in the foreigner scene once upon a time, if you, if you remember it. I do. <laughs> yeah. If you could get your mom to stop using the phone, you would get online and dial up that connection. <laughs> yeah. It's like we're going to have Ooh, the gas cool. deal here. <clears throat> totally expected, though. This is something that our Artosis would have to deal with all the time on the map, on, on these two player maps. And I mean, he chose Blitzy knowing that this is probably going to happen. So I don't think he's uh, going to be tilted by this at all. I think he's just going to take this in stride and continue with his game plan here. He cancels. Cancels. What? Yeah, for the Nexus. Call the Nexus first. Oh, okay. Seeing where he's it's at, he decides for thing. Nexus first. Yeah, it's an interesting huh. choice. Interesting choice. I haven't really seen this before. Well, because Ar Artie's plan is now... Artie has a game plan with the gas deal in mind. So mm. G5 is kind of calling his bluff. And it's like, I know you don't want to take your gas right now, you cheeky guy. So he's going to just be like optimizing his own build. <laughs> now <laughs> he's going to re-deal the gas. Yeah, yeah. It's a little cheeky way of playing. I like it. It's a little uh, optimized way of playing for G5 because he gets his 12 Nexus down anyway, despite going for that gas deal very early on. I can't imagine that stealing the gas, canceling, and then stealing it again is optimized play, but... <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and I would say it's optimal, the... <laughs> it does allow strategy. you to get this next to some time, at least. 
Well, he's going to go for a cannon here at the front just to cancel out any ability for Artosis to counterattack him with Marine. And Artosis, you're just going to take a Gasless Fast Expand. This is something he's obviously practiced on this map. And he is completely comfortable here taking this with the SCV in the main. He sees everything. He sees the cannon. He knows exactly what's coming here. And I think he'll be satisfied by what he sees. He's going to pull four SCVs to kill this gas geyser. That is and the correct amount. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. G5 is going to try and sneak back in here and steal this again. We'll see if he can pull that off. <laughs> there is one Marine to try and stop that from being a reality, but G5 is going to go for it anyway. It will take some time, though, for this gas to actually die, so the probe will be maybe isolated before that transpires. Yeah. It does get taken down by the course rivals of those Marines, and now the Marines are going to help those SCVs. But because the Marines were chasing the probe, it does slow down the timing of killing that gas a little bit. So are they getting this gas at 3 minutes 40? Not necessarily a great timing, but he's going to slowly claw his way back into the game, back into the gas curve. And both players going for this very fast expansion way of thinking, and Arty coming ahead on the work is 21 to 8, 19 right now. Yeah, he's done a good job of pumping out those SCVs non-stop with this CC coming up here shortly. He should have a relatively even economic position here to what G5's feel. They really gas gasless fast expand for Terran is the best way to respond to a Nexus first if you're not going to be busting that uh that yeah. natural yeah, uh, but the the forge cannon and natural is just so Artosis can't do anything like going to lots of marines and just put on a pressure yeah. play and kill him because just to, a zealot won't be enough to deal with the marines early game. So it makes sense from both players here what they've elected to do. And we're gonna be going into a fairly normal game this way. Oh, this placement of the citadel is really weird actually because it messes up the mining of this mineral. I think oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it fixes the mineral. I'm curious now. Does it actually make this mine faster as well? I don't know. It sure doesn't seem that much faster. No, I'm not sure. I think it's just to block the vulture run by, but I thought for a second maybe it was also optimized the probe to mine faster, but no, it's not any faster. This is kind of a cute hidden spot with the SCV in the main. You know, he's trying to hide what he's actually doing, and if you try to come, maybe he can come down here and try to find this, but it's not a sure thing. And with the Dragoon coming out now, he's not likely to scout this. This is an interesting play here. I'd like to see him throw down the robo. He throws down the robo in the face and cancels it. Hmm. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky play. Yeah, I wanted to see the robo there. But you could still go for like a dro DT drop. Definitely a good follow up. Yeah. Even with yeah, the robo with the robo there, like Ar Artosis might think like, oh, it's just a regular reaver play. And then the, dr the GT drop comes in, but... He's going to cancel that and throw down the Templar Archives. The DT just walking in the front is not nearly as strong. A lot of Terran players will have mines here and maybe even a turret as well. We do see that engineering bay coming up here. But maybe Artosis doesn't have it in time. We'll see. It's a pretty quick Templar Archives and he's about to start pumping out DTs now. He'll be able to get double grades. He's going second machine shot, but Marty's going to go vulture speed first because it's more optimal to get vulture speed and then mines because vulture speed takes longer to research. So now he's not going to have any mines to deal with the DTs in time. So because he's trying to optimize his build order, it might actually bite him in the ass a little bit here. Well, unfortunately for G5, he didn't have pylons ready so that he could produce two DTs here right off the bat. He's even being forced back. Something something weird just happened there. He tried to like run by a little bit. Not sure what yeah. that was all about. Was Trying like, to jump on the uh, on the turret or something. I'm, I'm really curious as to what uh, the plan was there for G5. Maybe try to kill that turret so the DT could maybe slip in. There's only one DT though. That's a yeah, little bit the, the, strange. But he should do that maneuver when the DT is there. Right, so right, right. That's why I'm wondering. What, yeah, yeah. What's That's going confusing, on with that? Right? I think I think he's just doing something weird because he messed up his pylon. And he's not going to have the window that he wanted to with the DTs that he. So he decided to do some kind of weird earlier attack to open up the the turret position for the one DT to slip in because he knew the mines wouldn't be finished in time. But I still think it's a bit strange. Like I don't think he should have gone for that either way. It's a sloppy game either way for G5 so far. I think that Artosis is going to have some pretty good timing coming out here. You know he he went for this map like we said. He chose this. He has something in mind, and it feels like G5 is a little bit all over the place with what he's trying to do. The mind games he's trying to play are ending up kind of hurting him uh, in this game. And now he's going to actually be able to kill this uh, 
this Dragoon here. A pylon should go down to block that, but he could still maybe kill the pylon here. A uh, gateway gonna come down. Gateway pylon actually gonna be made here. Wow. That's a little bit wild. He's gonna be able to block this out while he clears these mines. His uh, Robo though, not even near completion. This is gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while to deal with this. This is a little bit frustrating. DT chasing the uh, tanks and the Vulture heading across the map right now. He does need scans. He has the scanners. He should be able to deal with this DT, but right now it's getting some free damage here. Is Artosis gonna notice it or will he lose a tank for free? That would be really, really painful if he ends up losing a tank. There we go. He does get the scan. He's gotta back away. He loses a tank. Oh man, that tank going down is brutal. Other tank gonna come over here, start to break down this wall, but if there was two tanks, the wall would go down so much faster. One DT gonna pop out here. G5 in a lot of trouble right now. He's being pressured and he could end up losing all the probes in this bottom left. If he does, he's gonna be in so much trouble that DT about to pop out. The gateway getting low here. This wall getting low as well. More and more vultures and tanks are gonna be popping out, going up to six fact. Six fact timing is going to be the choice here for Artosis. He is just going to go balls to the wall here and try to knock out G5 right here, right now. Yeah, G5 going to be uh, uh, also going. He made, a, he made an Archon, by the way. I'm not sure where the Archon is, but he moved two high temples. And there's the Archon. I thought he was going to send this Archon across the minefield to help clear out the vultures from the east because it won't detect, it won't um, trigger the mines. But he's, for some reason, he just made an Archon. I thought he was going to rush straight into Storm Drop as well. We might see a Storm Drop going on at some point in this game. RT does have this uh, uh, pocket uh, created now after killing that wall. But instead, the Vulture is going to come over to the northern side and help kill that wall even quicker and create a path of escape and also kill that pylon for free. But yeah, like right now, RT has like a forward advancement uh, in this like catwalk area. It's a little bit precarious though. Only three tanks and a turret and a couple of Vultures here. It's potential to just like, get all this army killed for free if he's not careful. He needs to be very tentative of how he runs down here. There's a lot of Dragoons for G5. that's going to move out in a shuttle as well. He's going to lose his entire position to G5 now. It's a really dangerous situation to be in as a Terran place. and lose all of these units. Archon coming out of the shuttle as well to help DPS down these tanks with that sonic shockwave. And now the RT's in a lot of hurt as he starts to lose some of these tanks for free. He does have this high ground position still with some mines being laid to cover his retreat. So he's not going to let G5 kill all the tanks for free. He does start to siege up as well. Only a couple of tanks at a time. It's very wise for Marty not to seize all the tanks at once. Keep a few of them unseized to help de deal some damage. And a nice big mine hit on the left and flank of those goons as well, softening those up. And now G5 in retreat as Arty manages to maintain the position. Ooh, that went pretty well for Artosis. Imagine if he had immediately sieged up like a tank over here, maybe. You know, a couple of tanks on this high ground, build a couple more turrets. This would have been an unbreakable position, but now it's looking pretty dangerous, pretty easy to get through. If he brings out another shuttle here, uh, you know, guns down some of these low HP tanks. Okay, bringing forward the SCVs here is very, very nice by Artosis. He's going to keep those tanks at a high HP, ready for this next battle here, which is going to be coming up soon as he slowly pushes towards this natural and continues to rotate around the side threatening the counterattacks here into the third base. Yeah, he's denying this probe getting out for hopes of securing a fourth as well. So nothing is going well for G5 and he's trying to get out of this choke and he's going to have a lot of issues. He's just, there's a lot of uh, units he can storm right now, but most of those are vultures. He needs to get all the way up to this cliff edge to start storming on top of high ground. Decent storm on those vultures to soften them up, but there's not many zealots that they need to soak up. So it doesn't really matter if he uses too many of these vultures. They are somewhat expendable because of the low zealot count right now. He just needs to maintain this position and slowly push and start to contain this rally point of G5. That's why G5 is so desperate to come at it on the left with these Dragoons, open up this lane, clear out all these mines, and take away some of Artos' map control right now. Tank siege just outside of range, unfortunately, of this uh, Nexus and of this cannon here. He really wants to get in. Okay, it is actually in range. He's going to quickly gun down that cannon and go to work on the probes. This is big for Artos, killing off a lot of these probes right now while shoving in towards this natural. He's going to start to set up turrets here. He's setting up mines everywhere. There's not a lot of forces here for G5. This is looking like a Terran victory right now. Artosis pushing in towards this natural. Things are looking grim right now for G5. He's got one shuttle and a dream here. Can he break out? 
Yeah, there's a few turrets to help cover against that shuttle too. Storms from the high ground would help. As long as Arty doesn't bunch up his tanks too much, he should be okay. He's starting to unseat some of these tanks right as the shuttle comes in. Only four tanks are still trying. A big mine hit could have gone off there, but it wasn't able to get the connection on that. So the tanks are still surviving, but on low HP, if G5 could just get down this ramp efficiently enough, maybe he could deal with this. There's some opportunities to storm from the high ground as well, but he's not really controlling his army efficiently right now. He's in a state of panic. And right now, Arty's playing out of his mind, able to stay on top of his production right now, about even on supply, even even on workers looking really good, but these tanks are clumped up, needs to start shuffling these tanks back wisely, unseaging some of those tanks in the front and fresh shoulder, pulling them back. Some beautiful storms going down on those vultures and tanks as well. Those two tanks now on red HP, just one more storm will finish them off. So good connection there. Doesn't get them off on the Archon though, to sank, soak up some more tank shots while the Zelts come out. So G5 still being a little bit more cautious now, trying to buy as much time as possible while these goons out on the left hand side, resecuring that third base so he can keep his economy going. He does have a lot of money right now, but he's unable to spend it. So right now, G5 having a little bit of time, a little bit of an issue, trying to get some units going so he can actually start to break out of this position, but right now he's looking like in a, a situation where he can just take the game here because it's going to be so cost inefficient to attack into these mines and tanks. Yeah, this is a very difficult position to break, but the flank of Dragoons might make it happen. If he comes up here, kill the two, the two tanks on high ground at the same time, break through this front, maybe he can make it happen, but instead, G5 going to go across the map and try to fight into this spot right here. That's a nightmare. He is going to lose everything if he tries to fight up that ramp. Yeah, yeah RT just, what you said, Stan. he's too ready for this. Yeah, coming up yeah, the, here to break this. Yeah, that was the play. He didn't identify it, but uh, yeah, he just assumed that that position was a little bit more encroaching than it was. He didn't realize maybe there wasn't that many tanks in that very far back of the line there. Now G5 completely contained and squashed into a tight little box. And uh, I don't think the voice is going to be very loud talking from that box so much louder. In fact, it's going to be like Schrodinger's G5 right now, as uh, we can think of him as both alive and dead simultaneously. Just a few more moments here. One more desperate attempt from G5 to try and get out of this contain, but look at how many turrets there are. The mines, the turrets, the vultures, the tanks, everything is set up perfectly for this bust out attempt. The only thing that could be better is maybe some buildings in front of this, but mines will do the trick. This is just not gonna end up working we are almost making it through here just barely almost getting up into this army and look at that he will clear the last of the tanks these dragoons on high ground actually dealing with most of this and now he can start to remove the the mines here but he lost his observer so he's gonna lose even more <sighs> dragoons oh there was a building up here i didn't even notice that SCV over or a uh, SCV managed to get over here and build a supply depot now gonna lose uh, some Mining over here, gonna lose some probes over at the third base. This cannon's not gonna finish. Oh man, things are going really bad for G5. Even though he breaks out, I don't think he broke out well enough. He didn't break out efficiently enough and he's losing too many probes. He is just about out of this. Even with this bank, what happened? Why does he have 1500 minerals right now? Really needs to make that into units as soon as possible and get more bases online here before he chokes out of this game and Artosis is without any follow-up he doesn't have the you know science facility here he's only got one one he's still going to be able to take this game i think just with overwhelming macro at this point yeah i feel like the nerves have gone to g5 a little bit here and he's gone a little bit shaky maybe he didn't expect artosis to pick this map he didn't really have a game plan in mind for it and he's just trying to freestyle it and he's gone off the rails and he's in the jungle right now but artosis in a 4x4 jeep like on lsd with a cigar hanging out of his mouth wearing sunglasses meanwhile g5 it just looks like he's gone through a hedge backwards looks like he's gone through a hedge backwards i think i've heard that one before but that's a nice uh a flare mixed in shouldn't I enjoy the uh, <laughs> the uh, the British sayings here. Excellent, excellent casting. We've got the third base here, mining away happily. That fourth, sneaky fourth here from Artosis. The backup plan for if this next attack doesn't go well, but sniping down Templar before they can even get their storms off. This is going to be the optimal fight for Artosis, and I don't think G5 can survive. Yeah, it's looking like the writing's on the wall for G5 now as the RT, RT, RT Mactosis finally encroaches on his position once more. There's a scan going down to make sure there's no observer there as he starts to push forward. Now, there is some storm available to G5 there. If Artosis was a little bit too aggressive and pushed a bit too eagerly here, maybe he could punish him with like, some good storms and a little bit of an angled attack. But Artosis is being very methodical now, maintaining his high ground advantage. Has enough of these vultures to soak up this cellar. And GG finally called from G5. 
G5 here. Wow. Going to be evening up this series. Let's see a final decider match between these two. I'm excited for it soon. Jumping into our third map. It's going to be Troy. Oh, boy. I think uh, we do oh have boy, bans. Troy. Both players get to ban one map, but I don't know what map was banned by Artosis aside from Troy. Like, don't you think he would have banned this map? I mean, yeah, I would have thought so. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought this would be his ban. So I'm wondering what was going through his mind. Maybe he knows something we don't. But uh, yeah, it's a curious choice from him. I'm, I'm sure he's maybe kicking himself just a little bit here. Or, or maybe he's got something planned. But yeah, it's really frustrating to deal with as a Terran player on maps like this. Very easy to become a frustrating situation. Give more conditions to the pros player to frustrate you. Turn these corner bases into islands and frustrate you as a Terran player. Sometimes that can come back to haunt the Protoss. Makes it harder to set up um, additional rally points in the corners of the map as it as usual because once you contain that rally point you can then snipe the gases and contain that rally point by denying that ability to move out on the map so yeah it's a little bit frustrating late game as protoss players but in the early to mid game it's a very pros player favorite map keep it going shin i'm just gonna grab something to drink i'll be right back okay well looks like neither player really doing anything too out of the ordinary here i would have liked to have seen one player go for some super greed it would have been crazy to see artosis do something like a 14 cc but you just can't do it on this map unfortunately like there's so many uh, potential here of like a 10 12 gate from g5 even proxy gateway is really good on this map so i don't think we'll see anything too crazy out of g5 though i think he'll just do like a one gate tech play or maybe even rangers expand here but uh, Arty needs to do something, but I don't think he will. I think he'll just bring his, his attempted A game here, do a very strong three base uh, play here, and just hope that he can't abuse the map too much against him in this. All right, I am back. Got to keep the beak wet here. We don't want to be uh, losing our voice halfway through the cast or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Either one. Still have to do. Uh, still have to do KCM this week as well. So. Keeping it wet, keeping it moist. We've got Cyber Nice Core here. Just a normal play so far from G5, but I imagine there's some trickery coming here with this being his map choice. Yeah, I think he's going to do some kind of one gate tech play. Uh, I just don't know what he's going to be. It could just be Reavers. Also, Reaver into Carrier would be a nice choice on this map, I think. Nartos is just going to be bracing himself here for whatever weirdness is going to come out. Imagine he's uh, really wanting to get the scout in here. And unfortunately, he's not going to find him first. But he will find him here in the top left. Find out what he's actually going for. Is it going to be like proxy to gate or something? He's probably imagining the worst right now of G5. Like <laughs> He's probably going to send a ton of zealots at me and try to kill these assimilators. Yeah, he's a little bit worried about that. It being turned into an island, but... I'm sure Artie's well prepared for that. That's why we see him scouting right now and pushing out onto map with these early Marines as well. Maybe he can punish the cell out on the map and keep the keep the threat on the, the Protoss side of the field for the time being. If he can catch his probe as well, it'd be really interesting, but he's not going to quite get it. It's a little bit off to the side on this mineral path thing. And now that he's spotted these Marines, he's going to want to turn them away and run all the way back to the safety of his natural expansion. It was an interesting choice here for Marty. See if he can catch that probe or catch the first cell and maybe get a little bit of an early trade advantage here. It's interesting to see G5 just goes completely standard after choosing this map. Maybe he thought that he would force some sort of weird uh, option out of Artosis, and he does block the probe from getting in here, so G5 not going to get a full scout. He probably knows pretty precisely what's actually coming mm -hmm. here, although, although, Starport on the way here. Yeah, Vulture Drop going to come through. That's a, a quick vulture drop for Artosis. We rarely see him go like something like this on the ladder. That's why he didn't bound Troy. Maybe, maybe. He's got a plan here. He's got an idea of how to play on this map. It's going to be vulture drop with um, the CC coming up a little bit later. And he's going to be able to deny scouting. He can't really get up here and see the no CC. So he's going to maybe is, um, get in and do a lot of damage. This yeah, could be really this, brutal. This could be really rough for G5. The only hope he's got is if he keeps two to three Dragoons in the main base the entire time to like the six minute 30 mark. And he might not. He might move out. And actually, it's actually a very fast Vulture drop timing. So it can hit a lot earlier than six minute 30, I think. So G5 might just be caught with his pants down right now. Yeah, it's going to be a long time before we have an Observer out as well. I think we're going to have the, the Vulture drop come in, maybe into the corner here. 
And then if he runs down and places mines next to these gateways and in the, the path here, it's going to be almost like impossible to get Dragoon back into this main base without an observer out. That could right. be like almost a kill move there. It's going to be really tough. We still don't have that oh. CC. We're just focusing on getting this Vulture drop rolling. Well, I'd love to see Adi actually get the win here and start to progress in this tournament would be great to see him go all the way, get him into the finals. We can cast him in the finals, say we can stay casting these great games. <laughs> you know, we'd love to, but um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that comes to pass. It's still a long road to victory here for Artosis. He's doing well against G5 so far. Let's see if he can wrap it up here. Dropship heading in now. It's all going to come down to this. How much damage can he get done here? Will he come in over here? Is he going to try and drop here? What is the drop path for Artosis? When is G5 going to spot that? Because he's got no dragoons in his main. Zero. Right. Well, well Vulture Speed's also just not quite finished. So the Vultures are only just going to have their speed right as they start to maneuver in the main base. So it'll slightly optimize timing here. Just as they start to maneuver, speed's going to kick in. But it will be a few seconds before it does, so they're not quite as fast. But they will be fast enough to get on top of these pros while also laying down some mines as well. So big economic damage. And with the slow slide on that gateway, getting a few extra probes for his effort. Now can start microing against his vulture, against these uh, zealots, and lay down some more mines. Come back up here, kill the gas probes as well. There is a observer here, but he could get these vultures out if he wanted to. And move the dropship over to the right-hand side, scoop up these vultures and make an exit. Nice. Great job by Artosis. Able to pick off quite a lot of probes there. Wasn't on the count, really on top of the count there, but that was a lot of damage. About six or seven probes, maybe. He's going to come back in, drop it once again, see if he can get another probe or two here, and he should be able to do so. But G5 pretty quick on the draw here. Does manage to stop it before too many probes go down. Just one more picked off there for Artie and... He still has this dropship, but he hasn't moved it out yet. He d does need to send this to a safe location. You want to keep that dropship alive. Keep that threat in the back of G5's mm. mind. If he loses that dropship, that threat is gone. He can start to play a little bit more safe. He can start to play a little bit more, you know, secure. Um, and, and just, you know, without that presence of mind in his back. Back of his head here. Oh my goodness. We're starting yeah. almost halfway done attack upgrade for air he's gonna go back into carrier again and i love it on this map it's really really strong i think taking island bases like this just taking islands all over the place it's super hard to deal with any of those islands for artosis yeah i was just gonna say the same thing he's getting this air upgrade so it's either gonna be a two base carrier or he's setting himself up for a very strong three base carrier timing but it looks like it might be two base carrier it's kind of interesting I, I, but with the island expansion, like you say, it's just so safe to go for this kind of play. I, I really did think he was going to do either Reaver into Carrier or something lining up into Carrier. And either way, I think it's a great play on this map here. I don't think Artos is going to be necessarily prepared for it. Now, one thing to mention is the middle of the map here is huge. There's so huge. much space to fight uh, the Carrier. if they, they can't really come into the middle of the map, so they have to choose like directions to go. They can either go this way or they can go this way around the sides of the map. There's no real other choice. Now coming in with this dropship. Oh my goodness, Artosis. He's gonna have to pull a bunch of SCVs to try and block this and keep the bunker alive. The bunker gonna stay alive for now. The uh, Zealot's being dropped here in the natural to prevent the tanks from coming up to save, but he manages to save this bunker. Oh God, don't turn around. Do not leave this bunker. He's got to. Keep the SCVs here. Keep this bunker alive. He does manage to keep that alive for a couple more seconds. Just enough time here to save his life in this game. Now the uh, the siege mode is done. He should be able to stabilize here. But that was a bit of a panicky moment. A bit of a crazy back and forth there. Now a Wraith comes out. It goes down immediately. Oh, man. Lol in the chat here. Artosis <laughs> making a bit of an error there with that Wraith. 
Yeah, that was a bit of an oversight there. But great that he's got this Wraith to, to attempt to shut down that play, but he should have kept that way back into the safety of his base, trying to hunt down these observers, and uh, Shuttle's not chasing them out onto the map into the, the arms of those Dragoons there. But yeah, now we're going to see this powerful two-base carrier timing that we were talking about earlier, and he set up nicely to do that. We'll also be getting a Citadel of the Dune to be able to get those Zealot legs, the leg, leg enhancements so they can start running faster as well and prevent providing a lot more support on the ground. Oh boy. We do not have an academy here. No academy is going right into engineering vein. He's cutting corners, so I don't think he's gonna get that academy for some time. Nope. He's not gonna know. Yeah, he's he's gonna be completely blindsided. He's doing alright on the SCV count. That's great, but he's not gonna know about these carriers coming, and I don't think he's gonna be able to initiate a push. And even if he did, I think G5 would be okay if he just uh, he could even at some point abandon this natural. You know, kill the assimilators and just sit back in an island. Take this base, you know, take this base over here. Maybe take this base down here. Just have a bunch of bases around the map to mine from. And as long as he has carrier production going and as long as he has intercept money for interceptors, he's going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really tough for Artosis. He's going to have nothing. He's going to like show up with like pure Zealot, sorry, pure Vulture tank to deal with the Zealot goon. But then he's going to have nothing to fight these carriers. He's going to be catch up load. He won't have enough factories online to really continue the assault. So he's going to have to like retreat once he realizes what's going on. For the time being, he's going to edge across the map here. And G5 is going to like, we need to be careful not to lose this shuttle to the Marines. Oh no. Okay, there's a little bit of an issue for G5 to lose that for free there. Nice Marines getting a little bit of anti-air. They're all good to use if you haven't got Goliaths. At least have a little bit of anti-air to catch some of these observers and shells for free out on the map. And now going to be setting up some turrets as well to keep this push going and online. He does need to come up here and do deal with these carriers, but without Goliaths to support this, eventually he's going to have to run away with his tail between his legs. I think he's figuring out slowly here as he pushes forward that there is something going on. Maybe a carrier transition or something because... That shuttle was completely empty. We've got no zealots here. We've got no zealots. Oh, wait, we do have zealot speed. That's a little bit interesting. Usually two base carrier, you do not have zealot speed with that. He's going to be setting up a lot of turrets here. Two turrets at a time. Uh, maybe he's going to have enough turrets here with Goliath following up. He starts care on boosters. He's got an idea of what's oh, coming nice. here. He sees the carrier now. And he might not just barely be able to finish this turret. Yeah, the turret is not going to finish in time that's unfortunate can he get in here and keep attacking or does he need to back off i think he might just need to leave this this position now yeah if he had the turrets already set up it's a little bit different the turrets will buy some time to maybe hold the position a little bit but yeah with, with no turrets online here there's not really much you can do. Oh, he's still trying to get trades though he knows there's only two carriers worth of dps so he's still going to try and trade his units as best he can rather than retreat because maybe he wants to try and siphon off enough of this ground army that they won't be enough to deal with the the, the goliath follow-up here and he can just own these carriers with the goliaths out on the center of the map he also is producing another star for here and getting him going to cloak so he has another wing condition here where he can scan for the observers, kill those, and then just gun down all of the uh, uh, carriers here of the Gemini missiles. Yeah, I think that's um, that's an interesting decision here. He's gone for Charon boosters. He's got some Goliaths coming out, and he's going to try and go for Wraith. I mean, this is going to be a lot of gas. This is a lot of gas. He can't really afford to make tank with this type of play. You can only make Vulture. He's got two tanks on the way, but if he's just making a bunch of Goliaths and Wraiths at the same time, you really can't afford to make tanks. So I guess he's now switching out of Goliath. No more Goliaths for now. He's going to hold a position in the middle of the map and make tank Wraith. And he'll, we'll see if he can actually blindside G5 with this. If he blindsides G5 and kills a couple of these carriers, then maybe his ground forces can actually win and uh, you know kill the natural here. But... I don't know, man. G5. He's probably going to have some observers with this, don't you think? We've got one already. We have more on the way. We've got movement speed, it looks yeah. like, and more observers on the way here. Oh, one of the most craziest plays you can do in StarCraft, which you rarely see, is going for the optical flare on the medics, and you actually blind the observers. 
and then go into the race. That's like the optimal play, but it's so hard to execute. So we won't see anything crazy like that. But if he can be clever enough with the sniping these observers, he kills like all four observers, for example, then obviously he's got free reign to just gun down all these carriers. But it is hard to execute. Sometimes it's just one observer remaining and you can't quite find it in like the, the chaos of the battle. And it's like a little bit frustrating. Sometimes you just get owned, even though you've got the plan set up and you just can't quite execute it. Missing one key resource here. Unfortunately, Artosis, he does not have his commsats, so he's going to get those online. He can start to scan. He's going to need that scan for when he comes in with the wraiths to try and pick off the observers and then go to town on these carriers. So, wow, there's so many observers here, though. I think G5 has kind of figured this out. I think he sniffed this out. He knows that this is this is the Artosis uh, game plan when he gets cornered like this, when he's in a bad spot against carriers going for that. Uh, Wraith play is in his wheelhouse, so he's just banking up observers like crazy and getting prepared for this uh, This kind of all-in play from Artosis that is probably not gonna end up working out here yeah, He's a strong inf- he has a very strong infantry as well to support these carriers So even if RT does have a semi-successful go of it, he's still got to contend with the ground force of the Protoss player as well so Tank Wraith is actually viable in Protoss versus Terran more than people think. You can play a normal macro game going Tank Wraith. It's just very hard to execute because you're dumping so much more gas into Wraith. So if you do make mistakes with them, it's costly. But if you've got good unit control and execution, Tank Wraith is actually viable even if they're not going carriers. Well, we've got quite a few tanks here in the middle. We're going to be setting up a position here. Artosis. Keeping G5 back for now. That's a lot of observers. So how many do we have here? Four observers are ready and prepared here. G5 going to start to push forward. The Goliaths are going to have to back away. A scan and sniping the observers would be really, really smart right now. But he's going to try and fight with these interceptors. There's not a lot of interceptors, it seems like, right now. I guess he hasn't just popped them out yet. Okay, there it is. Scan. Killing the observers. I think that G5 should realize what's happening now. When you start to snipe observers like that... It's pretty clear what must be going on. Where are the wraiths? Here they come. Wraiths are coming in. He's going to scan. He kills the observer going after the carriers now. One carrier goes down. No, nope. no carriers falling just yet. One carrier finally going down. Here comes the observer though. There it is. Observer joining this force. And that is the gambit of Artosis completely shut down here by G5. He is not going to be able to advance right now. G5 going to take away this game very, very yeah, easily from here. Yeah, the Queen's Gambit gets trumped by the King G5 here as he wears the crown. Congratulations for Marty Mctosis being very polite there as he bows out of this tournament. <clears throat> okay, finally. We managed to get this replay cast underway my goodness it's been quite the uh, ordeal here but gypsy down in the bottom right now versus kaido in the bottom left radion for this first match and whoever manages to take away this game i imagine it probably will be gypsy we'll mm. see though will go up against G5 and the loser of this match will go up against Kaido. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of Kaido, but we did have a little check out on his stream before this cast while we were trying to get the replays sorted out. And he did seem like a pretty decent player, pretty high mechanics, pretty high APM. Seemed pretty good, but uh, let's see how he stacks up to someone like Gypsy, who's uh, very knowledgeable. But uh, yeah, I mean, it all comes down to execution at the end of the day. And these players might have some interesting build orders they've planned for specifically this player or this map in mind. So let's we'll see what happens on the day. Every player is going to have that puncher's chance in the tournament. This is a newer map as well. We're in close positions here. We'll see what Kaido can bring out. I didn't really get an opportunity to see whether he's like a high uh, execution style of player if he's like a very aggressive player or what is his play style but he's gonna be starting out here with a 12 hatch and once we get gases online and all that we'll, we'll get to see kind of his uh mo here yeah i imagine that we'll either see a 
either one or two things. He's going to be like quite aggressive with his mutilist play and be very high mechanics orientated. Or we'll see a much more methodical transitional play out of him and much more macro orientated. I imagine it might be the latter, but we'll have to see. It can be a little uh, daunting to play a player like Gypsy uh, in ZVT and try to go really macro oriented. Mm, they yeah, will be able yeah. to pull you apart with a lot of high APM plays, with a lot of multitasking. Uh, really pushing you to the limit. So unless you're absolutely confident in macro play, I don't think that's a good idea here. Um, as a Zerg, in a lot of these other matchups, it's not a big deal. Like you could go super big macro against Gypsy um, as a Protoss, but as a Zerg, there's just so much that they can do to pull you apart. There's so many ways to just die. Yeah, as Zerg, you have these like S class tier units that really dominate and can be used to abuse the Terran with good unit control but the reality is there's so many transitional points of weakness for the Zerg and timings that can be exploited by the Terran that as long as you've got good game understanding and can understand the nuances of certain game states you can really abuse a Zerg and frustrate them in all the things that they are trying to do and get set up so someone like Gypsy has the knowledge required to really abuse a Zerg and punish them if they make just one small mistake during their transitional phases of the game. It's like Gypsy going to move out with three Marines here, but we do have four Lings on the way. So the moment he sees that with the SCV, he should be turning around here. If he ends up losing these early Marines, the follow-up Mutalisk play could be really strong against him. He's coming in here with the three Marines. He hasn't realized that there are Lings here, and he's actually going to lose all of this. This is really bad for Gypsy. Yeah, he's trying to punish like just one pair of links being made uh, from Kaido here, but Kaido wasn't like pulling any punches at all. He actually like made not only the requirement of links of four, but he made uh, he went all the way up to six, and he's going to get link speed behind this as well to give him some more map control. So even if there was some kind of like two racks timing coming out from Gypsy here, he has this like counter available to him, just threatening a backstab as well. So it's going to be really tough for Gypsy to put any kind of pressure or, or punishing timings here onto Kaido, given he's lost those Marines early on. Am I? Am I blind? Is this is this not a hole that you can fit a Ling through? I feel like this is just slightly misplaced. I, uh, yeah, I don't think this is how it's supposed to be. That's I think what you're this saying. one's supposed to be one hex over, and then this is a wall, and then you only have one hole here. But yeah, I'm not a turn player, so I don't know. But it looks that looks, just, you know, that looks wrong. Know. That looks wrong to me. Uh, we'll see if that ends up coming to into play here. We do have a big hole on the right hand side. Lynx could run by there, but with four Marines behind this wall, I think that Kaido just going to keep these Lynx out here, make sure that the Marines don't move out, and get ready for this transition play into 2.5 hatch. It should be a really strong uh, opener here for him as he's getting his third gas online. He's already killed Marines. It's going to be a tight hold for Gypsy. He's got to have turret up here. He's got to have multiple turrets in this natural the rush distance from this hatch to this hatch right or to this base here is very very small so this mutilus timing is gonna hit hard yeah i'm wondering if the depots are placed like now on purpose so there's unit flow on the left hand side so that he can get the bio in and out of that gap so he can defend that position because if, if it was walled off then it'd be harder to defend against the mutilus threat as a follow-up as well so maybe mm. that's intentional maybe maybe so you can get through here and yeah. and defend on top as well as exactly. on the bottom in, in a line formation to engage the Muse. Yeah, it makes sense if that is the idea. In the bunker here to help defend. So he's going to use this as a point defense the to keep the, the supply depots alive. It doesn't really defend this too well, but it will defend this supply depot at least. And then he can get turrets coming up here in the natural. Looks like the turrets are going to be on time here. But is he going to add enough for all seven Mutas that are going to be popping out here in just a few seconds? Yeah, that's the interesting thing about 2.5 hatch is your mutas are kind of slow in the sense of when they arrive, but you can go up to seven like quite quickly. So he's going to be able to start one-shotting SCVs right away if he so chooses. Turrets are coming up in the main. This turret right here is a bit late, and Kaido appears to want to go all the way around straight to the main. He's realized that maybe Gypsy going to be a little bit slow with his turrets in the main base, and look at this. Perfect timing here. For Kaido, he's got to snipe that SCV. One, two SCVs down instantaneously. He's going to lose another. Can't get these turrets up. Three, four, five SCVs have already gone down. This is already a great first swipe by Kaido. He's not even going to lose one Muta either on the way out. So like five SCVs for no losses here. That's a great first trade. 
Yeah, he had a few misclicks there. He missed a few volleys. He probably could have killed like seven to eight SCVs of perfect micro, but still a great pickup for him coming in there and frustrating the timings of Gypsy. And any kind of SCV kills are great. You need about six SCV kills to transition into a normal game and be ahead on the economy. So he's already re met that requirement. He's killed his sixth SCV just now. So, and also denying a little bit of mining time coming in here, maybe sniping a few more kills. He's going to be really looking good in this economic curve, providing he can keep this third base alive and not get it sniped later on when the counter attack from Gypsy comes. Gypsy starting to move out here. A lot of these Marines are very low, baiting out some extra stims, but lots of energy still left on these medics. A lot more Mitas are going to be pumped out here. Queen Sinest thrown down in the front. We're going to be transitioning into that hive very soon with the Hydralist stand coming. Kaido ready to move to the next stage of the game. He chose this base, though, as his third base. It's going to be a lot harder to hold than maybe a base on that high ground in top left instead. Yeah, well, he's trying to guarantee a uh, fourth gas later on. So he's kind of like going all in and putting all his eggs in one basket and saying, well, if I lose this third, I'm dead anyway. So mm. I'm just going to take it as like a more awkward place. But it's harder to scan and identify this base as well for Gypsy. So he won't know exactly where this base is. He hasn't come on to have an SCV or anything to identify that. So he doesn't know for sure. But he, he will start to make his way across the map now. But he might be more likely to pressure this natural expansion rather than attack cross map. And that's why he's doing it right now. Because he knows that Gypsy won't attack into this top left pocket of the map while uh, being a threat of the Mutas coming back in again. So right now Gypsy's going to try and hold this middle ground. Mutas are going to swing around, cut off retreat, and also prevent any reinforcements getting here. He's going to dog these by a little bit. He's only got one uh, sunken here to defend. So the Mutas come across. So that's going to be quite uh, exceptional to not die right now. Yeah, it's scary right now here. The natural is... Not very well defending. He's going to start to lose overlords. He's got a full group of Muta here. The Lings coming from behind, not able to do much of anything. And the Mutas are not being well controlled right now. They're not getting the best uh, connections here, but Lings are going to come out of the main. Great targeting here from Gypsy, gunning down as many Mutas as possible. You can see that 11 Muta count drop into just five here very, very quickly, but trading out all the Medic and Marine. That's going to allow Kaido to actually transition here into this hive pretty well. It's like he's forgotten one uh, Muta down here at the bottom left, as well as a drone. So unfortunate mm -hmm. little mistake there. Can't happen to the best of us. Even with this, you know, this map here, it is present in game as well, and he can't take it away. So he might have missed that. And that might actually go for the rest of this game, not being spotted here by Kaido. Yeah, I mean, that trade went way better for Kaido than it did for Gypsy because Gypsy's not going to really have the forces needed to push out onto this top left corner of the map and uh, threaten this base. And that means it's going to be a free fourth base when Kaido wants it. Once he gets to the fourth gas online, it's going to be everything in his wheelhouse of potential. What he can do, he can make so many defilers, so many scourge, so many lurkers, even going to Ultralisk at that point. He needs to be careful with these mutas. They're like, flying over the Marines there, both units on move command, so didn't quite get all those mutas there. A little bit of missed opportunity. Kylo needs to be more careful not throw away his units too cost inefficiently here. He's still buying time to get everything online. So he's just now hatching the, out these lurkers and has these sunken set up. So there is a small window here for Gypsy to punish it, but he's too cautious and timid to come out onto the map and really go, go anywhere. So Gypsy right now just going to build up a big bio ball threat, go into his SK Terran and try and take the late game siege to Kaido. But Kaido looking very healthy right now in his uh, late game transition. Now, this is the hard part for a Zerg player, though, right? This is when things get a little bit tricky. Yeah. Once there's science vessels out and you're not able to harass with the Mutalis anymore, you're trying to get your fourth base online. It's going to be easier from this spot, but it'll also be easier for Gypsy to break through here. Um, you're going to have to stack up Lurkers. You have to put Overlords over top of them. You have to be very careful as he's already done that here in the natural. You're going to have to get a lot of Scourge out, make sure he can snipe these uh, vessels if they do encroach too far into his base and beware of drops as well there's so many different threats that are going to be going on right now gypsy could also start to take a bunch of bases like if he double expands while kaido is like really preparing for his defense he could go into like a massive amount of battle cruiser and get really really strong there's just there's a lot of things to consider here as a zerg and this is the point when a lot of these zerg players do end up falling apart so he's got to be really really on top of his game here against gypsy 
Yeah, the reason why we haven't seen Gypsy move this far forward until this stage is because if the bio ball was outside the Zerg's base and he flew across the vessels to try and meet up with the bio, they were at risk of being intercepted by Scourge. We have to keep the army back to escort the vessels safely across the map because someone like Kaido is good enough to have some Scourge waiting in the wings to maybe pick off some unguarded vessels. So you need to be really careful in how you protect those. You even think of your Marines as like the bodyguards and escort for your actual army, which is the vessels, the backbone of your main Terran force. Now, this is something I've never seen before, but he's doing this at both bases. Kaido putting sunken, sunken, stack of lurker in between with a, with a overlord over top. Same thing, sunken with a space, stack of overlord in the middle. And, I mean, this looks really good to me. If I'm looking at that, it's like the Marines are never going to attack that automatically, the lurker stack. They're going to first attack these sunken colonies 100%. They will take priority. And then you should be able to survive with the Lurker. The Lurker should be able to stay alive and deal that damage. He's coming in, getting a couple of quality irradiates here. The Mutas not being controlled at all. He loses almost all of them. And that means he's kind of open to a drop now. And two drop ships are being produced here. So those Lotto ships are going to be out on the map very, very soon. I don't think we have the vision to actually spot that by Kaido, and this might catch him off guard with not enough Muta here in the top left to defend. Yeah, the, the Mutalists aren't so great at doing anything in terms of harassing around the map anymore, but they are really good at anti-drop defense, so really a bit of a shame that he wasted those. Look, oh, he's the Fires. He's got so many units with this Knives Canal set up as well. He should be able to just come out and start um, throwing down so many Dark Swarms, try and buy enough time for Plague to finish too. And once he starts chaining out Plagues, it'll be really hard for Gypsy going forward. But Gypsy has enough vessels here where he can start irradiating all of these Defilers. Kyle needs to be a little bit more careful, not just like leave his Defilers hanging out like this. He's coming in towards the natural. He's going to bring these dropships around and try to break through the natural uh, in the top right. At the same time, or at the top left, excuse me, at the same time as this dropship comes in. This is going to be a one-two punch that's intended to knock Kaido out of this game. Will it be successful here? He does not have the Scourge defense to deal with this. I haven't seen even a single pair of Scourge made in the top left, although we have so many here in the main and natural. It's kind of ridiculous. It's so much. He is going to have that Dark Swarm, Defiler, Lurker, everything ready for that defense. The Ling's going to be jumping on top of that. Instant cleanup here by Kaido. Really well held so far. And the natural is not going to be busted here anytime soon. We should have play coming up pretty soon as well. These Marines are going to try to find a safe haven over on the right-hand side. But Ling's finding them in their clutches. Going to pick all of those off. Dropships moving around the side again. He's going to try and fly in one more time. The Overlord should be able to spot this just barely. No, it's not able to see this. Whoa, so he's going to be able it. to slip by over here on top of this hatchery. And Kaido, I mean, he had the defense perfect right up until this moment. He's going to bring some Defiler Lurker up here to try and stop this. See if he can hold on. The Defilers have not been irradiated. There's the uh, Lurker and Ling getting on top of this with the Dark Swarm. Both the uh, dropships are going to be able to get picked off here. Just pure vessel behind this. So Gypsy, his plan to uh, break this base has been thwarted here. And I don't think he's going to be able to uh, get up here and actually break this base. He's just going to have to go into a regular game with that third base going up and online. Maybe getting into a fourth base potentially. Maybe this base up here going to be taken. He's going to have to play it out in a long game if he wants to take this now. Vessels are going to be able to retreat. Stay alive for the time being small force out here in the front we should have ultralisk cavern here there it is ultralisk going to be on the way here soon we've got armor coming up everything looking pretty good for kaido as long as he continues these upgrades and gets into his ultralisk pretty soon here yeah i mean right now with the four gas online for kaido it's a little bit daunting for gypsy he's desperately trying to get something to work he has now two armies out on the map laying siege to both of the natural expansions of kaido simultaneously just try and contain the threat of the zerg as much as he can and try and keep skirmishing with the with the value of these vessels they radiate as much of the gas units the defilers and the ultras that might come out of these hatcheries it's, it's a little bit of a losing battle though because eventually kaido might explode onto the map so far though gypsy's doing a good 
job of containing the threat. He's taking this fourth base in the top right. He can start to get his own gases online and produce more and more star ports and start to go into battle cruisers. He will be able to get across the map with these BCs and start shutting down some of this gas advantage of Kaido and force him to make more and more scourge that takes away a lot of his lava advantage and the gas advantage that he would have otherwise had. So maybe Gypsy can snake his way into a good late game state here, but he's, he's still going to be up against it. One big thing to mention on this map is that the gas geysers are not near the walls here so it's not easy to park your oh great plague there unfortunately let's see if we can switch this no we cannot change the color here unfortunately so it's red on red sorry about that guys another drop coming up here in the top left oh man there's not that much to defend there are scourge here but they were not in place to defend this properly. A sunken colony here gonna buy a little bit of time. That will be gunned down. Ultras now are out on the field though. And with Ultra here, there's no point going for any more drops. These drops will be shut down easily by the Ultra. You just can't get enough Marine Medic into a dropship to actually fight head on against Ultra. No, you can know, kind of ignore, ignore the Ultra and gun down the drones, but that's about all you could ever hope for in those situations. And you'll still be gobbled up by the remaining units. Another beautiful plague spicing up this situation, making these units taste even sweeter, applying that chili sauce to them. It's going to be a nice little kebab for them to chew through soon. Drop again up here into the top left, but this is just going to get wrecked. Absolutely wrecked. The Marines are going to pop out. The Ultra, what is it doing? It needs to get over here. Save the drones. Uh-oh. Kaido may be falling apart That's a little good. bit here. He's losing a bunch of drones. That was an easy cleanup, an easy mop-up for these Ultras, but instead he's going to have to pull the drones away once again and losing a lot of them. This is actually turning out pretty okay for Gypsy, all things considered. I thought he was going to get completely wrecked there. I mean, he does have so many ultras that he can start to field. It's just that he's having a hard time cleaning up all this chaos that's going on to actually start to get out on the map and do something. Meanwhile, Gypsy's been macroing up a powerful army. He's now maxed out. He's got some BCs out on the map, which now can come out and start to put pressure onto these gas bases as well. He's not even mining gas efficiently back in here in the top left. So he's only getting about 1,000 gas a minute instead of 1,200 gas a minute. Which means there's one less ultra a minute that he's not producing us. It's going to hurt him in the long run here. Yeah, and he's coming out to fight here, but I mean, not having that gas online is brutal. The BCs are going to be able to make their way up there into the top left as well. They're going to start shutting down that gas even further. More bases out on the map for Gypsy, and yeah, these BCs might just spend the spell the doom here of Kaido. He finally clears this up. Maybe he can go and shut down this base. He actually should be able to shut that down, but... Losing the third here, or losing the fourth here, this gas, that's no compensation. Yeah, he needs to like plague these BCs and just try and get some Scourge up there to deal with this as quickly as possible. Or, I don't know, he could he also Dark Swarm his own mineral lines to protect the protect the workers temporarily while he tries to get some air defense out. But the Plague is the better option here to soften them up to make them more cost efficient to deal with with the Scourge. Now we see the Ultras pressuring this northeastern base. The Radiate actually could be cost efficiently dealing with these Ultras. They can't really come up here and kill off the Terran, so they're, they're going to all die to that Radiate. Gypsy's looking really good right now, forcing the Zerg to spend more and more gas on dealing with these BCs rather than coming out onto the map and doing something about the expansion path of the Terran. Gypsy's going to get further and further ahead in this game. Yeah, it's going to get really far ahead here with this gas being killed. Maybe one blessing is that uh, perhaps Kaido will realize that he wasn't mining properly on the gases and will get three drones back on there. He really needs those drones on that gas so that he can keep up with the explosive amount of army on the map for Gypsy and maybe get over here and stop this base. This base being up right now is a brutal. That's going to provide so much more money for Gypsy and the late game of Gypsy is going to be strong as heck. Dropship heading around this side. That's going to be blocked, I think, by the army here of Kaido in the main base. No way you're getting in there, I don't think. And Scourge sharking around here. He's looking for maybe a BC or something moving through the middle. He's not going to find it. He's not going to find these vessels either. And Gypsy is getting way too far ahead here. 75 army supply advantage is a lot. Now, it's not saying that Kaido is just out of this yet. But Kaido needs to get more bases online. He needs to shut down bases of Gypsy. Otherwise, he's just going to get overwhelmed. Yeah, so army advantage of 50 with the work account in mind. <clears throat> with the work account in mind. But he's got such a massive fleet of vessels 
that I don't really see how Kaido can deal with this without plaguing the vessels. He needs to like plague the vessels and get one viewer to snipe them all. There's no way he can keep making Scourge to win this game. Scourge will not win this game from anymore. It's going to be down to Defiler usage only. I don't think even that's going to be enough to surmount the deficit he's dealing with. He's not even mining efficiently in some of these bases. Hasn't got enough units left over at home to keep shuffling back and forth between these bases to defend the drops, much less clout on the map and pressure. Some of these bases that Gypsy keeps setting up, he's growing bigger and bigger while Kaido is just stagnating right now and also at threat of losing more of his economy in the top left. Yeah, he's going to lose even more economy here. He's going to lose these drones once again. Oh, this is so frustrating. Getting dropped here over and over and over. He just needs one ultra up here to deal with all this. And the drop play just becomes completely insignificant. But he hasn't been able to pull that off. He's been continuously sending lings and defilers to deal with this. Trying to get the ultras out onto the field to try and do something. He needs a big plague on all of these vessels but he's just not getting it here he's trying to fight with drone he's losing more drone yeah kaido really falling apart now there's not a huge amount happening on the map here but he's not controlling his units properly in this base he's not getting everything back online here like he needs to and he is just getting more and more behind as gypsy continues to accelerate ahead in supply yeah, it's looking really daunting for Kaido. Now, there's a deficit supply of like 88. It's kind of scary. I don't see how he's going to come out on the map and challenge any of these expansions of Gypsy. And Gypsy's going to get further and further ahead in the gas count as time goes on. He's got even so many BCs to field that it's impossible for the Zerg to cost sufficiently deal with this army by just plaguing it all. But he hasn't really got the kind of time to sit down and flow, throw down the plague. He's got 1v1 Juicy Plague here. Okay, pretty good plague. Gets most of the vessels, but still four unplagued. Still two BCs making their way to Northwest Quad not them have to start crushing oh beautiful connections though with those scourge actually that bc just dangerously low on hp d is just going to keep it alive and in in the game for the time being as it moves over to start pressuring that economy once more the radiance going down on those lurkers in the wall as well we have pretty much full upgrades for both players right now in terms of the ground army but right now these species are still only zero zero so if there was a carapace upgrade on the air the scourge would be dying to one shot to the bc so he hasn't elected to do that in this game it's like one Hydra gonna come up here. Cannon actually killed this battle cruiser. It's so close. Oh, 18 HP. Gonna survive. Eventually the spore will pick that off, but another BC making its way up here. A desperate counterattack from Kaido is gonna come over here to this base. But this base honestly doesn't really even matter anymore. Gypsy has expanded out even further. He's got more bases online, and this is not even gonna be able to kill his SCVs here. While well, this uh irradiated ultra gonna be able to deal some damage, but not nearly enough and gg is called GG. kaido taps out so yeah that did come to pass what we were expecting to happen the early game was good but kaido once we made it to this kind of like crazy you know high percentage win ch uh, air time or like a time period in the game i guess right but right as the fourth base is trying to get down and you know taren is unleashed on the map that's when things got really, really shaky for Kaido and Gypsy able to overcome him with the multitasking. All right, guys, we got spawning in the top right. It's none other than the man, the myth, the legend. It's Ardia Mctosis here, the caster himself, the legend. Can he go all the way, claw his way back from this loser bracket and get some life, get some hope in his tournament? He's currently facing up against a very strong Zerg in the bottom left. It's none other than Kaido. Very high APM macro oriented Zerg player. He showed us some pretty good games, some pretty strong potential. And uh, Gypsy did get the better of him. But maybe Arty will struggle where Gypsy was able to reign supreme. So it's very possible we'll see a Kaido victory here, despite a little bit of a upsetting defeat earlier. Very early SCV out on the map, going to be in very far forward uh, eight racks from Arty McTosis as well. We want to put the pressure on right away. And we have been seeing a lot of 12 hatch play from Kaido, so potential here for Marty to really put the hurt on. That's a second SEV coming out, so we're gonna see BBS in the center of the map here, and hopefully an early win for Ardy Mctosis and gets the better off this Zerg player. Ooh, are we getting eight racks? Is this double? BBS, BBS. Oh my goodness. Artosis, the scumbag Terran player. <laughs> gonna pull the wool over the eyes here of Kaido's just a honest gamer trying to play with hard work <laughs> you know just just trying to play his game man yeah getting a 12 hatch well, here 
cheesy McCheeser over here, just, you know, doing whatever he wants, getting free wins all the time. Like, what is it? Where's the honor? Where's the integrity? I don't know. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. He's just focusing here on he knocking out. On that. He's American. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even know there's a U in there. Yeah. <laughs> there's no U in honor autosis. Get it? <laughs> All right, here comes that BVS, man. This is so frustrating to deal with. There's really nothing you can do to save this natural here as Kaido. He's going to lose it 100%. How is he going to follow it up? I really don't know. What's the proper response here, Shun? Uh, the proper response is basically uh, pray and uh, pull drones. Cancel your gas if you see it early. Don't mind gas if you, if you, when you do see it. And try and use as many of your drones on Ling's as possible to not die and try and slide over them if you've got an overload out on the map and you got, you got minerals you can just like slide over your drones over the marines and hope for a good drill but it's really hard either way it's just gonna build bunkers here it's got two scvs oh man yeah yeah all right here we go pulling the boys pulling them all we've got two drones left on minerals here we're gonna build a sunken it's gonna go in oh no no pulling back here a little bit early, I think. Time to slide in. We gotta actually fight this before the bunker's done. And the bunker's gonna finish. Everything's gonna hop into that bunker. The lings are gonna pop out at the same time as the drones come down here. Is getting okay trading onto these marines, but all the drones die. We've got four drones total left here. And the sunken is in range of the bunker, sadly. He's gonna jump on that bunker. Can he actually kill it? No, the SCV is going to repair here. And Scumbag Mctosis takes this game G -G. away. GG. Those pesky Scumbag Pro Terran players, man. What can you do? <laughs> Artie Mctosis well, choosing pink here in the top left. Kaido, yeah. bottom right. See, Artosis knows what it's about, man. You got to pick your color. Yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows you need a little bit of flair, a little bit of a tournament identity here going forward especially while your games are being casted he's wisely choosing his color and we're thankful for it kaido here what's his plan gonna be after that defeat i mean what is it maybe 11 pool what do you do here no you don't go 11 pool because you know that Artie's not gonna do it twice but then Artie's gonna go eight racks instead eight racks yeah Hmm. <laughs> Maybe? Are we going to go 11 nice pool? Move. Let's see. I mean, Artie's trying it's to... Artie knows, yeah, Artie knows that he wants to do that, but he probably won't because he knows how far behind he might be if he does go for that. So mm. Artie's trying to be a little bit sneaky sneak here with his uh, choice of build orders. And he's also doing it at the wall location to not be super all in if he doesn't get too much done with it. Yeah, he could still, you know, build a couple of supply and make a wall here. It's possible. Just float back. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go 12 hatch again. Just gonna stick to his game plan here, Kaido. You gotta respect it. But it might be... Might be rough. Holding on this 8 Rex. It is cross map, which is gonna help a little bit. Yeah. Are we gonna build Although another drone? Oh, okay. I think we built an extra drone. We built a 12th drone here. Yeah, they that's a 12 pool. Um... Yeah, but one thing I was going to say is that with the with the cross map, it actually means he'll scout this pretty late, though. He won't identify the eight racks because the drone scout on Overlord now would identify the eight racks and said he doesn't see it coming yet. So it'd be a little bit later until he identifies it, but it doesn't really matter too much. I guess he could like cancel the gas if he really wanted to, but he won't want to do that either. There's only an eight racks, not a BBS. So it's going to be interesting to see how he approaches the hold here because eight racks is a lot different from a BBS. So you want to commit to the defense too much. It's like, you need to be careful not to lose the drone. Okay. I was worried that if he wasn't looking at his drone, like he can actually just lose that because if it goes too deep up that ramp, that he would just die for free. And now he identifies the Rex. He can pull the drones, get into the map with these drones already, deny the bunker being placed ahead of time, and also come out onto the map maybe and start to intercept these marines while they're on the way if he can. I don't think he's pulling enough drones here. I think we need to pull a little bit more. This is fine. This is enough. You think this is enough? Yeah, the Rex is fine. Staying here on the high ground. He's going to make six slings. Okay. There's two different schools of thought here. You could just go for uh, like the delay tactic here with the drones and try to slow things down, but you can't lose too many drones and you're making links behind it. 
or you can try to fight and just make pure drone behind this and you can end up losing you know three four drones and still be okay in that situation but you have to win the fight you cannot just like lose the drones and not win because then you're just gonna have drones behind it and look at all the lings popping out here i think this is an overcommitment. mctosis sees everything here and yeah. with the number of lings here i think he knows he is in a great spot he killed one drone but that's okay too many lings were produced here and he can just fall back into his natural with quite a few marine get his uh cc up and be completely safe behind this yeah this is looking really good for artosis because he forced a lot of lings and even though he only killed one drone usually you want about two to even things up with the eight rex it doesn't really matter because he denied so much mining time of how long those drones were out on the map for that really just that one drone kill was more than enough to put him into a comfortable position going forward here Lair here on the way. Kaido in a bit of a bad spot. What is his comfort pick for when you're in a bad spot? What's his desperation play? Does he just fall back to macro or is he like the per type of player who's gonna, you know, pull out a ling all in or something like that? Is he the type of player who's going to default to something a little bit more cheesy in order to take this game away? He's going to drop a gas geyser here. That's done. It's coming up before the layer is done. We're going to have the spire here shortly with the eight racks. The, the spire is always going to be a bit later. This timing is fine here. That's a lot of Marines for Artie. He has quite a few here and he's going into his second racks plus the academy. He's going to put on some real pressure before even these mutas can come out on the field. It looks like just default for kaido even in a bad position is going to be 2.5 hatch just standard play from him you, you gotta respect it but i think that a lot of play a lot of players would say that having like a backup plan a plan that's like an all-in uh from a difficult spot i think might be a little bit stronger yeah, well, that's why players like G5 struggle because once you've got a read on their range of play, you know that like they like to go for either carriers or bulldog or what have you. Like it does kind of like make it much easier for you and your prep and how you deal with them. So if you don't have a, a range of play where you can do these crazy cheese build orders, it does make the uh, other player much more comfortable in how they're navigating things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Here comes that push. Coming out across the map, two medics, the scan at the natural, two sunkins are gonna have to be thrown down. Emergency here for Kaido, and that's really gonna eat into his Mutalisk play. But a counter attack here is gonna dive in, gonna kill that Firebat. Firebat did quite a lot of damage um, to these uh, Lings. We're gonna send back some Marines here as well. Those Marines are gonna get picked off, and. The barracks are going to get slowed down quite a bit here. Sunken colonies are not all complete yet. Two of them are going to finish, I think, just before. Actually, this is not done at all. Oh, oh God. I think we we're a little yeah, slow uh, here. You can actually get some drone kills here as well. Like, you can kill this sunken and gun down the drones. Yeah, he's going to do that. That's the wise choice. You won't have enough DPS to break through with the sunkens too efficiently, but you can guarantee damage on the drones for sure and then go back to shooting. But he shouldn't have... I don't think he should stay here shooting these sunkens. It's a mistake. He should just kill the drones and back out. But other than that, this is great. Yeah, he was dealing with those links back at home. Looks like that's finally been cleaned up. But this is more, way more damage, I think, coming from Artosis than... Kaido was able to give back there. Dropping down to 25 drones. He's going to start to pump out some more, but this is his mutilus timing that he's been gearing up for this entire game. This is the timing where he's supposed to be able to deal damage to take control, and he's not really going to be able to do so, which is five mutilus here coming into the main base. We've already got turrets up and quite a few marines. This is, this is a good spot for Artosis, and Kaido's going to be licking his wounds here. He's got a third base on the way now. But he's going to be playing from an even greater deficit than he had previously after that A-Rex. He can't really pose much of a threat to Artosis until he has at least seven mutas here, so he can start one-shotting the SEVs. He's going to one-shot Marines right now, and as long as he's got these big, powerful spaces controlled with these zoning turrets, there's not really any way to come in here and punish Artosis. So with this 4 rex churning away, he's looking really rough for Kaido because this whole base is completely locked down. Look how many turrets. We've got seven turrets in the main base, completely negating any chance of a muta all-in working. But we do see the transition into Lurkers while taking this top right. So he's going to try and transition to a normal game and hope that Artsy has been 
invested too much in defense that he'll still be able to come out well out, well on the economic curve of the game. But I think Artie's going to get the... Right now, it looks actually okay for Kaido because it's 50-50 supply, 30 to 35. Needs to be careful with these meters, though. Losing one meters for free there does force a, a big stim. So siphoning off some of this medic energy will help him out later on, but he can't afford to use any of these meters for free right now. Wow, we just heard a big scan. He scanned everywhere on the map and found out that the base is here in the top right-hand corner. He knows about it. He can start to react to that. We don't have Lurker up here yet, so we will have to defend with pure Muta. That is our only option here. Muta, potentially some Lings coming out as well. We've got four pairs of Lings. That's eight Lings. That's quite a bit of DPS to deal with some of these Marines. They're actually moving up to the top right. This is a great play. Artos is going to just split two Marines off. Go kill the drones up in the top right. That's so frustrating for Kaido to deal with. Yeah, Kaido just wants the, the gas set up here in the top right. And if he can't do that, there's a one Hydra that's going to also be gunned down. One Hydra cannot beat two Stim Marines. So he's going to deal with that and then come in here and kill a couple of these drones or at least make them run around. Might even get at least one of these. There is another Hydra that pops out. He might even kill that Hydra if he doesn't morph it into Lurker. It's going to be frustrating the position. He does kill the Hydra. He can't even morph Lurkers up here anymore. It's a really annoying situation to be in with Kaido. He's also messing up his Muta stacking a little bit as well. Not even trading well with this bio ball that's currently still in square formation. Now we're moving out onto the map. We should be, should be dealt with quite soon, mode with this mutilisk and things out on the map here. I think RT should be a little bit more careful with this bioforce and not just lose it for free here and try and get some more Marines out there to support it. Yeah, this bioforce should end up getting cleaned here. There's plenty of Ling over here. I think Kaido missing an opportunity right now to pincer this. And now that there's some reinforcements coming out, that opportunity has come and gone. Marines are now in big enough stack here that I don't think that he can take this on anymore. He's making some Lurker up in the top right. But this is already a very hectic game, and I mean, what else can Artosis do to make it more crazy here? He might want to go dropship right away uh, after finishing up these two control towers. We'll see, though. More barracks coming up here. We've got the science facility about to finish as well, so he could just go into a standard play and start to irradiate everything. Yeah, that's true. But like you say, though, it's sometimes like a good idea just to make two drops before you go into that first version. Trying to get in here and see if you can get something done. There's one lurker that's finished, and he's trying to see if he can be sneaky and maybe wait for this egg to hatch and pick off that lurker before it can burrow, but doesn't quite have the timing down on that, so not quite able to stay there long enough to wait for that to hatch, and just barely in range of that lurker with the Muir support. Going to have to back out to maintain the safety of that bioforce out on the map. You see a defile amount finally going down. It's a little bit slow. Maybe there's a window here for Arty to punish before... Dark Swarm is finished, but it's going to be a tight timing for him. It might see a super late game here if neither player can make anything happen soon. Yeah, pretty common to see a late later game occur when you've got cross map on a big map like Citadel. Very hard to get in to either of these places. The rally distance is so far for the Terran player to get all the way down here to the natural. And he's moving around the map right now. This is dangerous though. Without any vessel, you could have like a couple of lurkers on a high ground like this that could just wipe out your entire army. And he's very lucky that Kaido isn't on top of that. He's more just confident with his uh, macro play that he wants to, you know, get, you know, overlords over top of the uh, lurkers here. He's doing it once again, having two sunken colonies with a gap in the middle and lurker there with the overlord over top of that. It's interesting. We'll see if Kaido has enough drop defense this time, though, or if he's going to let something slip by. Look, he's making making a Scourge over here. I love to see it. A good uh, adaptation to what happened in that game versus Gypsy. You don't want to leave a big space somewhere where you know you can get in with those drop ships, and he's actually clearing out everything. He's making sure he is safe everywhere. He's making Lurkers still, but he actually doesn't need many more Lurkers than this. He needs a fourth base. He needs to push out here. And start to take that, get that gas online so that he can get into his next stage of play. Get into that Ultralisk tank. And look at that. Lotto ships on the way here for Artie. There we go. Yeah, this is high level Zerg play that we're seeing from Kaido. His anti drop defense is really stellar here. You need this as Zerg. It's really important because Terrans under good Terrans understand the positional points of weakness for Zerg. And he understands that with consume not out, it's very possible just to get in there with a sort of semi all in dive in there. Like four or so drop ships. It's 
massive army just dumped into your main base. And if you don't have everything in there to defend, so lots of Scourge, lots of Lings, and some Mutalisks maybe to support, you can just get bowled over. And we're going to see Artie is going to go for that play, regardless of how much defense is up here anyway. And there is a Knights Canal already set up, so there's a lot of hope here for Kyle to hold. He's only just now finished up his country upgrade. He's oh, repositioning his Lurkers at the wrong time. Repositioning the Lurkers right now. He's worried about a D-Matrix play. He's going to move forward here, but right as the dropships are coming in, he doesn't burrow any of the Lurkers at that natural. And actually, Artus is going to be able to run right in here, gun down the wow. Nidus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kaido uh -oh. really making a big error here. And all the dropships managing to get out. GG. Already hitting this at a perfect timing there. Right as Kaido wanted to take that fourth. He didn't even burrow one Lurker here. I can't believe he made that mistake. He put yeah. down the Dark Swarm. If he burrows one or two Lurkers right there and then sends the rest back to try and defend, he should have been okay, but he just didn't have any Scourge up here. I saw that. I, I think I was... Uh, I don't know if anyone saw me boxing over this, but this area right here was completely dark. One Overlord here and some Scourge would have made this completely safe, but... He had everything defending over here. He had everything defending in the main, ready for this drop, all except for that one spot. Then Artie hits it perfectly. He scans ahead of time. He sees the, the 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 undefended area here in the top right and handles this man. What a game, what a play. Artie managing to make his way into the decider match. We love to see it, man. We love to see our fellow caster. The last caster standing here in this tournament. Whew, our final series of the night here, guys. This has been quite a day of casting. Definitely a little longer than we're used to, isn't it, Shun? Oh, yeah. Usually we're doing about half this amount, right? For KCM in a row. Yeah, maybe less than half. This is quite quite the long day here, guys. But thank you so much for stopping by, joining us. We appreciate everybody out there supporting Brood War. Supporting us in our current form here. We're trying to grow this sport. We're trying to ish usher in a golden era of Brood War. I think we're really actually in that golden era already, don't you think? I think so. I think that... Right now, this might be the start of the future, and you might be looking back at this game in decades to come. It's like <laughs> the retro RTS to play, and we're going to be playing this for a long, long time, guys. For a second there, I thought you, I thought you meant this game right here. Ar Artosis versus G5. This is the turning <laughs> yeah. point. This is the yeah, turning the, point right here where... Yeah, this is the... Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a rematch when they're all like old men. They can like barely like you know keep their back straight. And we're going to have a nice little rematch, a showdown of this epic point in history. This, this era-shifting moment. This These moment two nerds that ball out. broke the internet. It went viral, this game, afterwards. And how insane it was. <laughs> brought back brood war from the brink made it popular again yeah and started off we're gonna see a gas deal and the gas deal is a nice little sparse spicy way oh look Artie <laughs> Artie showing a little bit of frustration actually <laughs> may as well offensive gas me four player map first scout I guess it's fair fair and balanced yeah it is what it is Just happens to the best of us pure luck Pure luck. I know what that's what he would say. We've got, you know, Archos is definitely capable of going for a gasless. We saw him win versus G5 with a gasless fast expand previously. That was on Blitz. Why? No reason he can't do it here on Retro. And he's not attacking the gas, so I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a gasless fast expand here from our party. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you were scared about like the proxy gates or something, you could start making a second barracks and also have a chance of punishing the Nexus timing. But he knows G5's user response to go forge uh, cannons if he does that. So he knows it's not a good idea anyway. So instead, just going to be doing a nice little uh, bunker expand as a response to it. A little bit of frustrating play from G5 trying to put some pressure on that bunker. Now we're not going to find any kind of hope from that besides a little bit of HP damage on the SCV. It's going to be chased away by that first Marine from Artosis. Four SCVs killing 
this guest, which is basically what you need to do if you do the bunker expand. Usually it's like two SCVs right away, but where you do the bunker expand, you want to like just like kill it a little bit later, but you put four SCVs on it instead of two. I'm just going to drop the uh, CC now. No probe in here to re-steal the gas, so just going to get that for free here in a moment. G5. What is he going to do to leverage this gas deal? He's forced Artosis into this build. So how is he going to play this out so he can take advantage of him? Yeah, remains to be seen. I imagine G5 is going to play the same way he's kind of opened up the other games though. I don't think he's going to cancel this range, for example. I think it's going to be more or less the, more of the same from him. This time a much more standard Nexus timing, like a 25 or what have you. We're at 25 now. I don't see the Nexus just yet. Gonna drop some tech here. Reaver, yeah, Robo, Robo, then, yeah. Robo for now? Oh no, he's oh. going for the Nexus just slightly later. Like a 28 Nexus, okay. Yeah, he just wants to keep goon production and go 28 Nexus instead. Hmm. Wants to utilize the early range to, and the lateness of the factory to try and uh, get some damage. Force a repair bill here. Take the Protoss tax. Force some repairing out of Artosis, and yeah, he'll get that. It's just par for the course here, though. Artosis ahead on workers now. He's got both CCs done. So he's going to be transferring his workers over here a little bit faster, and this, this all kind of works out. Evens out in the end. Two SCVs forced off the line, and the repair bill. It's going to be pretty even, pretty much dead even, uh, that he had the earlier CC here. Yeah, you need one SCV per Dragoon to repair non-stop. There's a little cheeky thing you can do as Protoss and like manually stop your Dragoon shooting, let it fully heal to 100, then go gun it down. Hopefully the Terran player doesn't notice in time and doesn't repair it quickly enough. You see that happen to some Terran players, even Artosis himself on the ladder occasionally, but hopefully RT's focused enough that he's not going to let something like that happen here and just going to be constantly watching this with his SCV's hotkeys to make sure that he's always constantly repairing that bunker. And a double expand going to come out from G5 after this. This is just typical Protoss as well. Should this be able to hold three bases, no problem here. I'm going to bring a fourth Dragoon up to harass this bunker. And this is forcing quite a serious repair bill, of course. We're going to be getting Siege Mode and a tank. you got to be very careful. It's super tempting to come out with the tank right now. But four Dragoons will two-shot your tank if you let them it's potentially mm. possible to block with the scvs you got to pull really fast to block the dragoons from coming forward to kill that but if you try to come out with the tank and poke on these you're just begging for uh something bad to happen so we might just see artosis wait for the siege mode it's almost done let's see if he comes down and tries to poke here yeah he started the siege mode royce at the same time as the tank so it finishes about five oh or eight no 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 later. okay Sorry, that bunker was getting kind of low. Looks like he does get the repair, and he will hit this siege mode. Everything going to have to be pulled back here, and G5 doing the right thing. Getting his next eye online. Dropping a few more gateways. And a potential for a bulldog play here. What have we been saying this whole time? G5 likes the bulldog. Well, he's just been going carriers every single game. This time, though, it may be that Bulldog play with three Nexus online this quickly. And this many gateways already coming out. He's going to have a lot of units. And he could potentially build a few shuttles and just run Artosis over as he tries to take his third. I mean, I imagine that's what we will say. What we'll see. And I, I do. Well, we'd like to see it. And that's what T5 usually does. Um, I guess he's been practicing this carrier style a lot to have more diversity in this tournament lifeline here, so he wasn't too reliant on that bulldog play. But now he's maybe going to be trying to pull that out here, overwhelm RT. I oh, will see. We'll see if he decides to go for that. Now Artos is going to start to shove forward here. He should see the four dragoons and realize that probably not the best idea here. There's more and more dragoons coming. There's three more dragoons coming up. Four dragons will snipe your tank very quickly, and oh my gosh, I think Artos is going to be in a big, bit of trouble here. Look at this, chasing these uh, dragons up, but the flanking dragons are going to be the real problem. Has vultures behind this, but 
Look at the dragon's gonna jump on top of this. He's gonna target down as many as he can, but with three coming up from behind and these tanks already being quite damaged, he's gonna end up losing all of these, I think. Yeah, and the mines only just now finished. Those couple of vultures he did have on the map weren't even able to support with their own mines. So now he's going to clean up all of these tanks and G5 could be very healthy in this game. And he doesn't even have to commit to a Bulldog anymore if he doesn't want to, but it might be actually an even stronger play now to go for his Bulldog when Alti tries to take his third base. Uh, that's really, really rough. If he had had mines on the flank here to block these Dragoons, things would have went so much better for Artie, but... As it stands, he's going to lose these vultures trying to make a run by. He's going to lose these vultures trying to make a run by as well. G5 is just secure everywhere, and there's really nothing Artosis can do. He's got two tanks on the way and none on the field. So how could he possibly take a third? What can he possibly do to bring himself back? I guess he's going to try and make a wall here, put a tank on the high ground and take a third really, really greedily. But that's even going to make him easier to bust here. Even easier than yeah. it already is. Look, we've got carriers again from G5. So really oh, narrow man. range of play from him. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know. Okay, carrier. If he goes carrier and RT takes this third base without being contested, maybe he's still got a shot here. Maybe, yeah. 9 minute 30, yeah. third? If he holds it, that's a big if. We might have a shot. But if G5 was going for the Bulldog like we were talking about, I think he just bowls RT over. But if he kind of does a middle ground play and like makes some units and goes into carriers, I think there's a chance here for RT to claw his way back into this game. He's got what's ready. He's got like ready for a Bulldog here with the, or just a defense with the, the shuttle and the Zealots inside. Artos is going to do his bad. best to make it look like he's just sitting here on two bases. But he's actually taking a very sneaky third. Here comes that shuttle into the main. Just going to drop Zealot on top of tank, maybe? Okay, you're going to drop on top of the tank. Try to pick off one of them. Got a target with the target with the tanks onto the Dragoon. If he keeps firing at the Zealots, he's going to kill his own tanks, and he does. And now the Dragoon's just going to bowl him over here. He's got nothing in this bunker because he used up all of his Marines. And the Dragoon's going to come right here into the natural now. There's only two tanks remaining. He's going to pull the SCVs to try and stop this. And Oh, man. G5 going to head north. He should be able to just kill this base here. Blocking with the ramp with the SCV, but it's not good enough. It's just not going to cut it here. He's going to make a run for it with the command center. Try to save that at least, but I think that's going to go down as well. And That's massive talent. Absolutely massive. Artosis. <laughs> Salty. As he is on the ladder. <laughs> but honestly, I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope he's doing this on purpose because he's trolling. <laughs> or if that's genuine, that's hilarious. That's why I switched from T to P 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not sure they were gas stealing back then, but sure. TVP is very hard. You're not wrong, G5. Not wrong. Well, the, a little bit of frustrating experience here for Artosis as he tries to navigate his way in this game. He's currently down 100 supply to 140. He does have slightly more workers than G5, but he's lost so many units in this game. It's had his tank count reset again and again. I think just now starting to get back up to a healthy tank count. He's got six, but now the carriers are on the way, so it doesn't really matter that he's finally established himself. He does get the bad news confirmed as well with those scans. Seems that it's going to be three base carrier with a fourth base on the way at 12. I think he's unaware of as well. So it's just going to get worse for Artosis the longer this goes on, unless he can somehow snipe some of these carriers for free. I just don't see that happening. He's going to start no. Karam Booster. He's going to get his third base going. What do you do here as Artosis? Do you push, maybe push through here and take this base while you're pushing? Try to get I mean, into the TTF natural? Say GG, but I mean, right. obviously he shouldn't just necessarily leave the game. Uh, he's just still trying to make a fight of it, but it is really daunting for him because he, he both needs to expand. So like he kind of does need to like take six o'clock or something as his expansion and push along this sort of horizontal axis and try and get on top of the rally point and see if he can get 
on top of the carrier production by uh, knocking out these bases once the process is carried, uh, contained. So you could take the kill the natural in the third. Maybe there's a winning condition there to be found, but it's just so hard to achieve that with with the infantry that G5's already got fielded out. It would slow down the advance of Artosis far too much, and we've already got quite a sizable uh, carrier count out already. I think there's at least two carriers out with another three on the way. So he's gone to five carriers at the very least very quickly. And that's going to be enough of a fighting force here to stop Artosis from making too much ground here. Yeah, here we go. Gateway army here going to clash with this advanced force of Artosis. He's losing tanks at the front. He took a pretty good trade with the uh, Zealot overall. And now the tanks are going to be targeted right onto these Dragoons. So a lot of the Dragoons are going to get splattered in the retreat. But just dealing a little damage here, slowing things down. Full scumbag Protoss in effect here. <laughs> the 12 o'clock hidden base being thrown down. We take the base over here in the center left for Artosis. He's going to transfer a ton of SCVs over there, I think, here pretty soon. And maybe just try to attack out once again. But there's just so much going here for G5. He's at 173 supply. He did kind of forget carrier capacity, so he's a little bit late with that. It is going to come online here in a moment and he has four carriers so four carriers enough to fight as soon as they've got the interceptors ready artosis is going to be in a world of hurt he needs to fully saturate this yeah. gas so that he can pump out enough goliath to actually deal with this and he's not saturating the gas right now he's actually focused on pushing at this moment which is very important but getting this gas online is so so big you really want to have that rolling so that you can actually continue to make Goliath and tank during all this fighting. Make some more factories as well. There's just so much that that gas uh, will buy you at this point in the game. And you can see he's got a thousand minerals and a hundred gas. He needs that extra gas online and he's just not getting those SCVs in there. He's chasing this army around the map. An army which doesn't really matter. The real true army that matters here right now for our to or for our g5 is that carrier force and it's just continuing to grow and expand and grow and grow and it is huge at this point six carrier with three more about to pop going up to nine with plus two i believe he's got yeah it's uh, plus two. pretty pretty Oof. crazy to upgrade advantage as well it's gonna be really tough for artosis going forward here I think he could even expand to the center of the map and push through that and hope for the best but i don't know it's really tough and yeah he's missing he was missing on like 200 gas a minute from not mining that gas optimally and he's had this uh, science facility up for quite some time he's not going to produce a single science vessel as well so there's no potential of, like say getting a good emp on all of those clump of carriers or something to maybe help you know get the advantage that way or any d matrixes to help out either so instead just going to be trying to force his way down to the mouth of the, the protoss player and see if he can put a big enough gob stopper in it to shut him up but right now g5 is going to be screaming as these fleet of carriers start to lay siege to this like force of goliath that's also got to contend with the cell of goon there's a nice little formation here of using the, the protoss wall against him so it's really tough for the g5's units to come out here to contest this and he's also going to get to get the denial on this armor upgrade as well so it's a nice little win for our hoses but it's a nice little high ground advantage and Microing around with these carriers being a lot really frustrating to Artosis to even engage correctly here. There's some dragoons that are running into some mines at like the nine o'clock location. I don't think they're going to find too much for their effort. But right now, it doesn't really matter. Artosis lost pretty much all of his uh, Goliaths here. And if he can't kill this Nexus or anything for compensation, then I don't see how he's going to win. Yeah, he needs to get something done, and he's just not able to get a kill on this Nexus. That is what he needed. I mean, at the bare minimum, he needed that. Building a huge force of turrets right here. That's an interesting decision to make. Um, he didn't break off any units to actually go up and kill center right either. And top center still hasn't been scouted, I don't think. So he's really going to have a huge amount of money. G5 is going to have huge waves of money coming in to be able to keep fighting this. And Artosis, he's losing control of his center left. Can't really do anything about that. He's floating a CC to top left. He's going to see a Nexus there already. Army going to come up to try and clear this, but giant force of carriers just going to fly right on into the main base. No defense here to speak of, and I don't think even, you know, 10 turrets would have been enough. 20 turrets wouldn't be enough. Really, there's nothing that's enough to deal with this many carriers flying straight into your main. 
Wow, yeah, I'll tell you, he's just going to leave, not even saying GG. Once the Protoss is on top of your production like that, there's no hope. And yeah, unfortunately for him, going to be snuffed out by G5 here in a very unfortunate way in this game. He'll be very unhappy with this loss. Will he be able to mount that comeback or will he be stopped short here? G5 spawning in the top left. Artosis in the top right. So what are your predictions for this game, Sam? Are you going to see anything crazy? Are you going to see a Vulture drop play from RT maybe? Or do you think super standard tried and true from RT and maybe G5 go for a Bulldog instead of a Carrier Committal? What do you think? I'm going to call Vulture drop here. Okay. I think I'd Artosis, like he needs he needs a moral victory, I think, in this game to, to give himself some momentum. If he kills a bunch of probes early on, I think he'll be able to take the game. If he just plays it out like long game, just grindy macro, I think right. that he's going to be a little bit tilted. Like, if anything goes wrong, things are going to get bad for Artosis. So, yeah, we, we, we were saying that he's a very good... Um, tournament player he's not someone who gets tilted like he does on the ladder but that i mean that last game what can you I say mean, about that typing yeah i mean might have to change my opinion a little bit about that <laughs> i mean i, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he knew those games were going to get casted and he like played that up for the crowd but i don't think so i think he no. was genuinely really tilted <laughs> there and he was really mad that he got scouted first and guessed on like that and it's kind of like an idra response right like you just get focused hyper focused on one thing that went wrong with the game and that like you know becomes the whole narrative and i feel like he's like kind of like duplicated Idra's thought process a little bit too much and hanging out with him too much back in the media days and still to this day that that way of thinking and that mentality is still like kind of causing me a little bit of a hiccup here in this tournament well hopefully he can pull things together here get out of his own head and play this game out he's chosen citadel here and for what reason, we're not sure just yet. But he's going to show us. He's going to give us an insight into the mind of Artosis. What is the plan, man? Are we going to have that factory? The drop, the vulture drop into the main. Are you going to prove me right, Artie? Or are we going to just see a macro game out of him? This is like perfect like positioning it. for the drop, right? Yeah. The, the main is facing the natural. Mm-hmm. Exactly what I was thinking about it right at the start. Did uh, Artosis was did he scout like bottom left first and then come down here or what? what what's the uh, yeah. what's happened here? It was, it was an end scout, but a very awkward one. I don't think so. I think he just sent out this SCV now to check bottom right. Oh, maybe they, maybe I didn't read. Really, yeah, maybe. No, maybe what's right. he doing? Okay, maybe now he's doing end scout. Uh, yeah, I think I thought he would end scout no matter what. I just assumed he'd done it in a very weird way. Hmm. Well, at least he's gonna feel a sigh of relief when he sees that there's no like Nexus first or anything here from J G5. He's just gonna see that yeah, you're playing a normal game and that's something that he can handle. We've only well, got one. Only one on yeah. Guess. yeah. Just one on gas, so probably not going to be that vulture drop. <clears throat> Take this fight here. Does finish the factory, no problem. G5 going to abandon ship. Backing off. Not going to do too much damage with that first zealot. We'll be bringing it forward. Oh, getting a little damage on that zealot. Okay, one marine almost going to die here. He does lose one marine. That's a little bit frustrating. And the... the uh, Dragoon gonna come into the main now. Mar Dragoon on high ground, dealing quite a bit of damage, and he's actually gonna have to take this high ground back. With the high ground being taken, Artosis will be able to push everything back. The Vulture shredding the shields there of the Dragoon, and we will have a bunker on the way now. This dra this Vulture could sneak out on the map here, so uh, G5 kind of staying in this position, making sure that there's no Vulture on the map. That's going to allow him to keep sending Dragoons out. Oh, he blocks that. No Vulture on the map for you. Artos is going to have to sit back at home with that bunker. Just play defensive from this point. Yeah, the SCB is also there to prevent a, a run by body blocking if they needed to. Those first two Dragoons, if they wanted to, could be super sneaky and try and sneak into the main base because there's only one Vulture, two Marines after killing those initial Marines. So 
could have gone for a run by there if you wanted to. It was really important that you got a Vulture and a SUV here at least to give a bit of body block potential just in case G5 would have gone for something crazy like that. But it's very, un very rare that Prosplay would dare to do that. He wants to just instead force out a big repair bill from Artosis while he gets his uh, tech online back at home. Got a Robo on the way. Mines are on the way for Artosis. He has got this Siege tank coming out much earlier than usual, so can start to poke away at oh. these Dragoons. He might get a kill this Dragoon, actually. Nice little pick up from him. Can cause him to press. He needs to be careful not to lose his uh, tank, actually. If G5 was paying attention, he could have dove onto that tank and 2 volleyed it down. Artos is getting a fantastic scout right now. You know, a lot of pressure was coming out from G5. He was making sure that there was no Vulture. But he didn't know about that SCV that came in and saw absolutely everything inside the main. He knows exactly what's coming here from G5. Can Artosis react to it properly? And can he control to keep himself uh, in a good position here? He drops a mine, but he loses the Vulture. Really unfortunate stuff. That should have been a miss, but only one of the shots missed there. Well, it could have been a miss, but unfortunately, Artosis has some of the worst luck you'll ever see in your life M gets that. yeah he loses that vulture there i don't know what these probes are oh, up to what the? hanging out well this isn't a bugged replay guys i think this is the most craziest misclick you've ever seen in your life and uh g5 is in pandora right now not currently sentient and finally his consciousness has kicked back in so the, the process took a little bit of time there to kick in and actually allow him to use the, the motor functions of his hands once more uh that was uh that was a little strange we're not sure what was going on there i hope it's not a bugged replay he is back to mining now oh uh, dragoons on high ground here just going to be defending and third base will probably come up soon vulture is looking to sneak around and get a mine in there if he can trying to make sure that he can slow down that base as much as possible and Looks like he will be able to get in there. Triple gateway here. If Artosis tries to push out anytime soon, he's going to be in a world of hurt with the number of Dragoons that are going to be pumped out here by G5. Question, Saiyan. Hmm. Do you think if G5 loses this game, he'll whine about the fact that his probes were idle for like 20 seconds? I mean, that's that, that's definitely your own fault, right? Like, what did you... Hmm. Where, where did you tell them to go? What, did you tell <laughs> what them to was do? that, yeah. What was that? Oh, eating a mine as well. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit painful of an earlier start here for G5, and that might be just what RT needs to find his confidence back in this matchup yet again after that disappointing game number one. Artos is pushing forward with tanks. This has all been revealed, though, and just what I was saying, man. If he, if he pushes out right now, he's going to find himself in a world of hurt. He has no idea, I guess, that there are three gateways here and no third base. There's no reason to push. There's literally and no... G5 no reason to push right now. I mean, G5 plays like this so much. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't thought about it, but I'm going to go for it anyway. I can try and lay down some mines in front of these goons, but once he sees these many goons, he's going to just turn, tuck tail and run, lay some mines in the wake. But with the observer here, he can keep chasing these tanks down. Even the shelter here with some zealots in it. So I don't know how Artos is. He can even drag this mine into these tanks if he wanted to. Could try to do that, but he is just going to fall back. Vultures making their way over here towards this natural. Looks like he cleaned out maybe the probe that was heading to take the third base. And not going to clean up this tank. So actually, Artos is going to get away with this scot free. Managing wow. to you know, build a little wall. Oh my god, the pylon right. not blocking. He's going to slip by here. Meanwhile, a bulldog at the front. He's just going to dive on top of these tanks. SCV's being pulled. So many probes are going down. We can watch here in the probe count. Dropping and dropping and dropping. Just 26 probes remain. If Artosis manages to hold this, I mean, he's going to be in a great spot. He needs to really hold this well, though. Okay, he's catching all of these dragons. This is a great hold. Getting on the bottom of this is very important. He will get the surround here. Killing off all these dragons. And look at that. Still plenty of workers here for Artie. He's going to kill this last vulture. And I think he's come out on top in this kind of insane trading situation. I mean, look at this pile of wool. What was G5 thinking? I mean, yeah, we, we, needed, to, we needed to revise this pile of wool a little bit, my guy. I don't know what that was all about, but it's like he's playing some like pixel art, but with pylons and those like old UMS maps. We had to like draw hearts with pylons and stuff in like a time limit, and the one who draw best one, some sort of pixel art competition. You're not I guess winning you any, can't, any prizes at them. 
You can't build the pylon there, maybe? I think maybe? you can. You think you can. It's just that this pylon's blocking it from being placed there. Oh. Needed to be down one, Hex? Yeah, he just messed up the wall from the other side of the wall, so it, it uh, made the whole wall bad. Oh, uh, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah, maybe start with this pylon and then build out. It's a little easier. Oh, don't be silly saying that's too smart. <laughs> uh, well, that really cost G5 a lot. I mean, he cleared the uh, the tanks, he reset the tank count, but Artosis, I, I, mean, I think he smells blood in the water here. Academy's gonna come up, he's gonna build maybe another factory or two and just go for the win here? Is that what we're gonna see? Or is he gonna start a, a starport? Right around now is when you wanna start the starport if you're gonna continue on in this game, if you're going to try and uh, get into your plus two upgrade on time. Let's see what he decides to do here. He's adding on some Goliaths to deal with the uh, threat of those shuttles. Oops. Getting rid of G5's uh, vision here. Like a vulture being sent in. He's just going to find some dragoons here on the wall. And yeah, look at that. He's not going to add any starport here. No starport coming up. Just a bunch of supply depots. And a lot of units popping out here. Just now the Citadel is coming out. So... A long way away from a potential, uh, you know, zealot speed here. But we are going to have multiple, multiple shuttles here. Going for yeah. two robotics facility as he gets his third base online. It's a very late third, though. Look at that. 11 and a half minutes we're getting our third. Well, it's double the infantry production of G5. But yeah, with this double robo churning out Reavers, that kind of does like, you know, tip the scale of balance a little bit back into G5's favor, providing he can micro these Reavers and get these Scarab connections. Nice little sniper there, getting one of those Goliaths and scooping up that Reaver into safety. So, so far, so good for G5 going forward. And yeah, there's some people in the chat a little bit confused about whether or not this was a bugged replay because of those pros being idle and, and also maybe the macro not being so good. But I can assure you, these are just like two dinosaurs that we've kind of like, you know, revived and just playing a little bit slow okay guys it's not a bug replay don't worry just chill out chill out <laughs> yeah, we've got artosis now snaking his way around to this like northern threshold with this ridge line a very strong position to hold once he get on top of these reavers if he can but he's using quite a few of these vultures for his efforts so he has shaved off the shields but those will generate with time so artosis though is building some turrets here and setting up a nice little camp here to roast some marshmallows and hopefully g5 along with them so a counter attack gonna go around this army into the natural here can we get some big reaver shots but the most important thing is actually defending this push that's coming across the map right now oh my gosh six i think eight. we're at nine now it's big damage that's big damage it will get cleaned still at 40 scvs still ahead in scvs over the probe count so i think that artosis can still push the issue here and have a good economy behind this. He's going to try and get up on this ridge line. And the ridge line here is going to be a very nice defensible position. Adding on more tanks. Adding on more Goliaths here. Setting up more turrets is going to be great as well. As soon as he's up on this high ground. I think that G5 just really has to go. He has to break this. Yeah. Yeah, 40 SCVs is just is it's still a fine amount. You've got enough for 16 on minerals, which is about two per patch, and three for the gas on each. So it is enough. You usually want like 44, so you've got enough SCVs left over to build things like turrets and depots constantly. But this is still good enough going forward here. So mm. it can still churn out enough units to overcome G5. He has got this additional advantage now. G5 wants to come in with the shuttles, though. Five bombing on with the Zealots and Reaver onto the tank, but let's get taken out in short order and didn't really crack open the position until so RT now looking really potent in this position. Just GG call from G5. RT convincing victory here over G5, Sam. Yeah, that was a really good snipe on those shuttles. The shuttles came in to try and bomb the tanks and immediately gunning those down. Of course, the turrets helped out a lot. Two Goliaths here doing their work and G5. I mean, he got slowed down so much. His third base was so late. He just didn't have the production to overcome this massive push here out of Mctosis. Let's jump into the last game. Guys, the last game of this series. Back to Radeon. Where it all began. In that very first series. G5 took out Artosis. Can Artosis get his revenge? You're in the decider match. That's what we're going to find out. I am uh, 
glued to my chair right now. I can't wait to see if Artosis can make this comeback happen. Well, I'm so glued to my chair, you forgot to make coffee. I don't think I need it. This game is pepping me up enough, Sam. Let's see if we can change the color. No, we cannot. It was played on melee. So we're going to have to go with this puke green versus, uh, what, what is this called? Pale olive. blue? I don't know. One of the things is olive versus pale green, actually. Pale green? Is this pale green to you? That's pale green and the other one is olive. I don't know. Maybe I'm colorblind. I don't know what's going on here, Sam. Who knows? Are even real? This is the simulation. What's going on? Our colors, to me, look the same as colors to you. Is are we all seeing the same we, colors? We don't know. We don't know, though. Right? My red to you is different <laughs> to your red, right? How can I prove that my red is your red? You just see it as red. I just see it as red. We just labeled it red. doesn't mean anything. Well, now that philosophy class is over, let's go back to StarCraft. We've got... G5 opening with a pretty normal build here, yeah. It looks like he's just gonna open the way he's always opened. In every game so far today. Not gonna go for it. Well, he did go for it before the Nexus with the, the Forge a couple of times, right? That didn't really work mm -hmm. out well yeah. for him. No, not as well as his other range of players been, but um... Yeah, instead we're gonna have two of the most ugliest colors, that combinations that we could possibly muster to bring you this final epic game in the series. And who's your money going to be on uh, saying it? I know you want Artosis to win, but who's your money on? I think Artosis got the confidence after that last one. He was like, yeah, that mm. first game in the series was bullshit. He got lucky. This last lucky game, ducky. I played really, really well. I overcame G5 and I can do it again. What do you think, Shun? Yeah, I think you're right. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. That's, like, that's more or less how I'd be feeling if I was Artosis, given what's happened. He's going to be feeling renewed confidence. Like, yeah, I deserve to win. He just got lucky. This dumb Proto State <laughs> first scouting me Gas Steel. I'll show him. I see a bunker expand, though. He anticipated a Gas Steel anyway. It's going to bunker expand. <laughs> Much minus having to kill the gas here for Artosis. It's going to be able to scatter skip on making those Marines. Just a 15cc. Does help you optimize a lot more. Kind of like in. Um, Zerg versus Terran, where you scout the 12 the twelve hatch and you can just skip that marine and throw down the CC right away. Optimize a little bit. Ooh, he's getting greedy here. Gas as well. Supply Depot. Uh, CC. Supply Depot. Gas. Then Marine. Then Bunker. I mean, we're really cutting it close here. If there was a Zealot coming across, this could be a little bit, uh, bit tough, but... He will get the bunker down in time here. It seems like we're skipping the Zealot straight into Dragoon. We're going to take the Protoss tax, but Artos is going to be happy to pay because his pockets are going to be full here. Oh, yeah, he's going to be more than happy, especially going for this bunker expand versus the much more standard uh, line of play from G5. Getting this range and like you know not negating any tech um, early games to get an economy lead, so going to be really behind the curve in his own economy now basically placing down the nexus when the cc is already finished for artosis so that should give you some idea of like where the economic state is in this game as we now see two SEVs being produced at a time despite the workers being the same so right now artosis will be racing ahead in a worker lead by at least five or so workers but but it seems a bit yeah this is looking great for artosis right now just need to repair his bunker and Get his factories out. Probably double factory here, I imagine. Makes sense. Yeah. You do want to get your uh, production up and online as soon as possible after this uh, bunker expand. And looks like he's going to try and sneak in with another SCV. Good block there on the ramp. Reverse ramp. Can be a little tricky to block, but managing to get it done. A big fat dragoon there. Able to stop everything from getting in and... Citadel plus robotics facility. I think we're going to see a DT drop. Yeah, I think you're right. And not only that, but the worker lead is uh, going to be a, about six or seven, actually, because um, G5 cut a little bit of probes to squeeze out this robo and tech. So, yeah, um, he's going to be even further behind the economy curve of the game than I thought. So he really has to make something work with this play, because if he doesn't, I don't know how he's going to have any kind of hope in... Uh, doing doing any kind of successful plays in the mid game is going to be all hands on deck for Artosis and his game to lose as long as he doesn't bungle some kind of move out. I, I think like he's going to take this. Yeah, he needs to make sure that he has turrets in his main and his natural. Play defensive, get mines. 
And he should be fine. Not, not mining, for, not, not repairing for a second? Yeah, for a second there, I wasn't repairing. <laughs> I was a little bit worried for him. It does happen. Sometimes you can also do that on purpose where you stop attacking the bunker just for a second. Let it repair back up to full. The SCVs stop repairing automatically. And if you're not paying attention as a Terran player and you've not got those SCVs on hotkey, you can just lose the bunker and then you're in trouble. Looks like he is going to finish off that siege mode. Siege tank on this high ground going to be able to defend here, no problem. But we're going to see some uh, shuttle pop out here pretty soon. With the shuttle, two DTs are going to be made here. This is the gambit from G5. Can he get in and deal that damage? Or will Artosis have the game sense to have appropriate defenses in place? I don't see... I don't see an eBay. There's no eBay in sight. Oh boy. It's going to be pure unit defense and without any detection. I mean, he's only got mines to rely on and you don't really want to rely on mines in defending your mineral lines because SCPs can blow up in your face as well. So this is oh not no. going to be an ideal hold for him in any stretch of the word. Oh no. Shouldn't hold me. We're about to lose this <laughs> game to some DTs, man. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you and I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be prepared for the Artosis rage, okay? I'm gonna be really salty <laughs> about this. Get okay? down, get down, boys. <laughs> get, guys, get in the trash can, put the lid on. It's gonna get real up in here, real early, okay? Not as many seconds, Artosis is gonna Everybody, be smashing people. Get down, boys. Here it comes. Two oh. DTs and a dragon right as he's moving out. Oh my god, here we go. DT. And what does Artosis type in the chat? He's going across the map. This is... <laughs> this is... Oh, wow. Your talent is very overwhelming. The spirit of Idra lives on in Artosis, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He is retired, but he's sending notes to Artosis on how to be entertaining even when you're losing. <laughs> Guess right on everything. Everything just goes your way. Oh, I guess it must be pretty cool to play Protoss. Yeah, it is pretty cool. You can see that he can just defeat this entire army with one unit. No problem at all. Artos is going to be calling GG shortly here. Unfortunately, he is going to be knocked out. G5 is going to go forward. Oh, man. Our caster buddy here getting taken out. The 11th hour at the very final game of the decider match. It was not meant to be... Unfortunately, he will be... Well, fortunately, unfortunately, I guess for the fans, fortunately, we're going to have Artosis casting the semis and finals of this uh, tournament. And uh, that's all she wrote for us, Shun. We're yeah. done. We're done with the NSM, man. We made it. GG. Well, I enjoyed my stay. GG. Yeah. I had fun. I'll be watching this on Artosis' stream the future games here between all these players battling out for a thousand dollars cash money provided by Mooney. Oh boy. That's it guys. GG. Thanks for sticking around everybody who stayed.